abrigo, pongo mi lápiz y libreta. Mi amuleto, mi espejo en la maleta. ¿Por qué? Lágrimas de adiós se van secando. Fueron muchos los paisajes que vi pasando. ¿Por qué? Viejo camino, nuevo destino y lo único que reconozco son las estrellas en el cielo. ¿Por qué? Conmigo, buenos recuerdos en mi memoria. ¿Por qué yo no puedo vivir? Starting in one minute, which is actually when the song ends. So I'll see you soon. One minute. everyone welcome to the stream or the video if you're watching this post uh here we go you guys ready i think we're just gonna get right into it welcome everyone this is how i made the 1000 players build massive civilization in minecraft video hopefully you've already watched it obviously there will be spoilers so welcome everyone in chat by the way welcome welcome Cell's not ready. Hold off like five minutes. No. Uh, I think I might ping priority for this one. Should I? Nah. Nah, I could just do a rain. I don't think I need a ping priority. People will be mad. <laughs> Alright. Uh, just give us one minute. Do it. They're priority people. Nah, I guess they can cope. Alright, that's fine. Posted. <laughs> All right, so this video is very long, one hour and 13 minutes. So I think we should probably just get right into it. I don't know, I, I, should I really watch the whole freaking thing? <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Welcome everyone if you're just joining. All right, uh, 
maybe we should start with uh, a little uh, Vegas screen so you can see what it looks like. All right, hold on, let me open up Vegas here. All right, so this is what the uh, timeline looks like. I will show you all. <laughs> I think this is the last video I'm editing in uh, Vegas Pro, but uh, this is my creation. Oh, it always takes a while to load. You'll see why in a second. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'd probably have to switch to Premiere. Not just for not just because I want to edit in Premiere, but because everyone else uses Premiere. And if I ever want to work with another editor on a video, then yeah, it's I can't really go back and forth. Uh welcome everyone, by the way. Welcome to the stream. This Vegas is Vegas, man. Listen, Vegas has been successful for me. Like the cut G. Thank you, Legacy. I got a haircut like a month ago, but I uh, appreciate it regardless. Uh Premiere is like the apple of editing, unfortunately. Interesting comparison. Speaking of Premiere being better, better than Vegas, my video, my video didn't cut while uh, being rendered. It didn't stop at thirty percent. All right, uh, this is it. It has finally loaded up. In a second. It's still, it's still frozen on my screen. Uh, I don't know how much I'll be able to show you guys on Vegas today because it is insanely laggy to maneuver around a project this big. Okay, so uh, here we go. The entire thing, the entire video is within this little part here. Uh, this is the top timeline. You guys can see this all right? I hope so. Uh, okay, now, okay, I'm in. Okay, let me try scrolling down here. Okay, scrolling down. These are all the tracks. Um, this is a big project. And again, I don't know how much we'll be able to go in depth. <laughs> uh, but yeah, each of these is like its own project, its own pocket. See, I'm trying to scroll in. I'm trying to zoom it out and it's lagging already. Uh, here it goes. Uh, yeah, this is the uh, introduction. In the biggest social experiment ever. And yes, so ish to you that, yeah, I've edited this whole thing by myself. Um, Jaw helped, John Leashed, Mr. John Leashed helped uh, give me some title slides and a few miscellaneous things to add to the video. But, uh, like, for example, he made this title slide. It was very fancy. Um, what font do you use? Uh, three different fonts. And uh, one of them's called Coco Goose, the other one's Lemon Milk, and Jaw, what's the one that you sent me? Lilisha something, I don't know. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'll just show you the timeline, and then we'll just probably move on from Vegas. Can I even scroll? Let's see. <laughs> no, I don't think I can. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'll just keep this open for now, in case, like, we really want to go back to one part. Uh, but, yeah, okay. Let's start the video. And uh, I'll pause whenever there's something particularly uh, relevant that I want to mention or interesting. All right. Uh, any questions? Any quick questions I can answer before we begin? Let's see. I'm presuming you needed to go back and reach yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get to all that later, Block Zone. Yep. Actually, the sand trap, we didn't need to reshoot. That was one that was all, all the footage from that scene was 100% real. The video, at least. The video portions. Uh, how, oh, yeah. Actually, yeah, I can mention that real quick before we begin. Good question from Asher. Um, how do you run a server with a thousand people? Uh, it is a... It's a system called server sharding. It's called server sharding, which is essentially fusing many Minecraft servers together into one. Uh, basically, Minecraft is built in a way that you can't really run... Uh, a server with more than 200 people at the same time, or at least have it run and be smooth. So uh, what our developer, Pierre Giro, did is create something called Multipaper, which fuses many different powerful Minecraft servers together, uh, and then players from each server can interact with each other, and players from different servers. So basically, a player from server 1 sees a hologram, a hologram of a uh, players from server two, three, four, five, six, they basically all see each other, they can all interact each other, even though they're technically all on different servers, it's as if they're all in the same server, in the same world. So, yes. 
that's how we do it. Both the prison video and this one. All right. If you want to uh, learn more information about that, look up multi-paper made by uh, our developer, brilliant developer, Pure Juro. All right. Any more quick questions? How long did it take to write her? Actually, surprisingly, it was like three hours. <laughs> I expected it to be more. Okay. Let's do this. In the biggest social experiment ever done in Minecraft, I scattered 1,000... Right away, this shot is from my next video. This shot right here. Uh, this is from my 1,000 player Simon Says. <laughs> Which, uh, I haven't started editing yet, but, uh, that's the next video. Already done, already recorded. It was very convenient that I got to use this shot, uh, in this video. It just happened to represent having a thousand people in one spot, like, it did it super well, this lobby. So, uh, yeah. thousand people across four massive islands to simulate... Also, I, I'm not gonna be pausing this off. I swear, this is just the intro. The biggest social experiment um, ever done in Minecraft. I scattered 1,000 people across four massive islands. This shot right here. This is a render. Uh, it took uh, Jaw Boy Jedi and a few uh, helpers <laughs> about eight hours to figure out how to set this shot up, and then another like ten hours to render. Yeah. Uh, just for a one second clip in the freaking intro. So, appreciate this shot. They worked very hard on it. <laughs> ...to simulate a realistic civilization. The players were given no help or guidance, and just like in real life, if you die, you remain dead forever. No! Now each player has the freedom to do whatever they want. Pro gamer dude never played in this event, so I just wanted to use his skin. Gather resources, join a society, become a dictator, or if it comes down to it, go to war. With so many people on each island, Epic anything intro can music. happen. But I can promise you one thing. This event ended up having the most entertaining story arc I've <laughs> ever seen. You do not want to miss this. So pick a nation to root for and enjoy the video. Is the audio good? I, presents to you I hope the audio is good. The 1,000 player civilization experiment. This is a small fun fact, but uh thousand player civil every time each of these letters pops up <laughs> you the 1000 eventually i got tired of trying to find sound effects so i just did all those noises with my mouth and just basically cut them and th this one player civil civilization <laughs> experiment <laughs> you know what hold on hold on <laughs> <laughs> Slow mode, please. I I can't. I I don't know how to. Hold on, hold on. I might actually have this saved. This is entertaining enough for me to want to go into. Hold on. Uh ah, here we go. <laughs> here's here's my sound effects. Uh, I'll just mute this for now. That, that, that was not my mouth. That was a sound effect I found. And then this one too. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Alright, moving on. Again, I got tired of looking for freaking sound effects. <laughs> I've done Don't that for... Forget. <laughs> good bye, that's very these good. Videos, Pro editing, thank you. Server, and of course, subscribe to my channel. Alright, <laughs> everyone ready to be teleported? <laughs> Jump if you're ready. I just lied to Wobbuffet. That was the actual okay, lobby, by the way. The one we just showed. Players left 1,000. Uh, I'm in. I made sure Legacy was the first shot there, so that all the old viewers would be uh, intrigued. On day one, using all legacy 1, for views. Thousand players were teleported to their islands, each its own biome. We had plains, desert, snow, and jungle. This is huge. Most that shot was fake. Uh, I just needed to get an extra shot, and I just had luck, dude. Say this is huge. Uh, I just couldn't find anything good for that, so I literally just 
told Luck, dude, hey, could you, uh, could you say this is huge, uh, like, ten times? <laughs> I'll choose the best one. <laughs> All right. Oh, no. Oh, these comments. Players spent the first day scouting their island, searching Sean, for a place do, to settle. Don't. But almost immediately, we started to see people dying. And oddly, <laughs> they were all coming from the snow island. Yeah, that that was all true. There, were, I think, like, what, 30 people died right off the bat uh, because of powdered snow. Uh, and I think the actual reason they died was because uh, in the very, like, first half... I think in the first, like, 20 minutes of, the, of day one, uh, we disabled block breaking. Uh, so basically players teleported into snow and then walked into powdered snow. And because we had disabled block breaking, they couldn't break their way out no matter how much they tried. Uh, so we actually ended up reviving all those players, obviously, because that'd be super unfair, uh, if we kept them dead. But uh, it was still a pretty funny, funny start to see a bunch of people just freezing to death. Right. It turned out people were freezing to death <laughs> Some of you remember stuck in powdered that snow, experience. which looks exactly like regular <laughs> snow, but sucks you in like quicksand. This guy trying to free his friends. <laughs> oh no. Even worse for the poor people on the snow island, trees were almost nowhere to be seen. The desert island... Uh, trees were actually a lot more plentiful in snow than in desert. Uh, they were still quite rare, but like, it, it took me a little bit to find a good shot where there wasn't at least like one tree in the snow. Snow didn't struggle nearly as much to find trees as desert. Also had desert was completely trees, barren other than like a few pockets. Wood. But the places where players did find trees quickly became extremely valuable hotspots for groups to settle at and colonize. <laughs> Look at all these people coming together. Community crafting. <laughs> They're making progress. Meanwhile, the people on the jungle island had essentially unlimited trees and were thus already thinking about other things. Good question from Legacy real quick. Could we talk about your mixing of days? You used a day six interview in in Kimoshima in day two. Yeah, uh, I'm very, very loose with where I choose to show events from certain days. Uh, I base it completely off of what would make it the best story, essentially. So there are a lot of things and a lot of major events, actually, that I showed like I switched their days. Basically, I showed them on different days than when they actually happened. Um, uh, I'll probably just actually list them as we go. I'll just give a quick example. A freaking turkey uh, died on day eight <laughs> instead of on day ten. Uh, it was it was still the cause of the war and everything. We'll we'll get into all that later. Um, but yeah, we'll move on. Things. What did you say your plan was? I'm gonna take over the world. <laughs> this is my right hand man, Darbo. Hello, right hand man, Darbo. Those of you who don't know, Wazik is actually a friend of mine uh, who. I've known him for several years, my uh, good British friend in, in my friend group, and uh, yeah, he was uh, his attitude to this whole thing was, "God, this is stupid, but I'm gonna make the best of it." That was his whole that was his whole thing in regard to playing in this event. And man, he, I think even he made a bigger splash than he was anticipating. <laughs> Speak. While having a lot of trees did seem like an advantage at first, many jungle people found the island to be difficult to traverse, given the immense amount of trees and the hostile mobs that would spawn uh, on Don the Caleb, surface. Don real players or actors? Sunlight. These are all real players. Uh -oh. <laughs> this fear of traveling also made it more difficult for jungle people to talk with each other, since players could yeah. only read chat messages from people 100 blocks away from them or less. We did a pretty cool chat proximity system, where if you sent a message in chat, uh, only people within a 100 block radius could actually see your message. Money? Oh god, there's Tudru with his cash. Tudru, I don't need more of your cash. Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Tudru. Um, but ba people found a way around that chat proximity system a little bit by doing the command slash team message, which I didn't know about until after the event ended. I don't know how I did find out, but yeah, people got around that and they were able to message their whole uh, island, everyone on their team. So, oh, stupid. <laughs> Although, frankly, at least they didn't have to see what me and the admins were looking at. Yeah, Lastly, global chat was some. Plains Island, and boy, was it different from the others. Plains, yeah. 
It truly was just the perfect island <laughs> to live on <laughs> with <laughs> green grass, trees, animals, <laughs> and no natural danger. Scheduling a little animal family <laughs> or farm. Not needing to worry about dying as much as everyone else, the people on the Plains Island were among the first to start mining for resources like iron or diamonds. They were also the first to build up villages PC and specs, yes, I have to create civilizations. Throughout the first day, you could see two main groups starting you want, to I can come together. Get more specific later. One of them, a democracy led by a player named Horus Crown. Our aim is building the most beautiful and nicest city on the entire So, uh, Plains was a little weird. Uh, basically everyone who played in this event knew this nation, Horus Crown's nation, as Pandarus. That's what their, the name of their nation was. Uh, but I completely excluded all the names of the Plains nations because it would be way too, it, it, basically, Viewers would be overwhelmed by the amount of information coming at them because they would see this is Horus Crown and his nation was Pandarus. This is Sidefall and his nation was UPS. This is 20 JP and he led the invisible hand. It would be way too much information. Even having four different leaders from the island was a bit much. Um, but that's the reason, that one reason why I excluded all na names of Plains Nations. Uh, reason number two is Sidefall's nation was named... UPS, which is short for United Plains States, I believe. So that would probably be the most confusing thing to mention in the video. United Plains States. Multiple states. I don't know, United Plains States. Is that, uh, is that all the states in the Plains Island or just one nation? And why is it United Plains States? This makes no sense. That would have just been a nightmare. <laughs> and the second, also a democracy led by a player named Sidefall. But it wasn't the stupidest name for a nation. Oh, the stupidest one is coming up. I just want to make sure nobody dies. <laughs> it was actually kind of odd how similar these two civilizations Wait, were. Wait, money? They were both Eki. located on the southern shore. You shouldn't say alone with it. Wait, hold on. I didn't get that. And their leaders both what did that say? Good Sorry, Eki, I missed that last part. I just part. hope nothing happens to change that. Ish, I'm gonna I'm make an you. Among Us character. Never mind, I, I is. hope they die. Soon it was the end of day one. <laughs> a little Wobbuffet line there. Players across all four islands logged off and made plans for the following day. It was on day two when civilization oh, really began to thrive. Uh, what gave you the idea to start all one life something something civilization servers? Uh, Magicum. I saw Magicum's first civilization video and I'm like, I want to do this my own way. Check out Magic Gum's first civilization video. He's the sole reason I started this. The southeast corner of the desert, what used to be an empty patch of grass, was turning into the desert's largest <laughs> I really enjoyed nation. watching the souls in it. Yo, what's up, ish? The souls on his back. You might recognize <laughs> the player storming hell from my- I think that was a line that I had him record post. Um, basically, I'll, I'll just explain this now. Uh, a lot of these shots and interview quotes uh, are all from after the event ended. They basically, I just get people in a call and we talk about, you know, I need this type of line, what do you want to say here? Uh, and then I often like write something out for them to say and they'd be like, all right, yeah, that's fine. Um, it made things a whole lot easier and uh, it allowed me to make the flow of the video a lot better. Um, so yeah, that, that was an, like, I, I just had him say like some introduction or something first civilization video where he led a nation called the Sultanate. Well now, the desert dictator is back with the Sultanate 2.0, and this time with a population of over 100 people. I want to maintain <laughs> order and peace in the desert. The rules <laughs> as established by the Sultanate. Uh, yeah, so real quick, I can also explain the whole scripted thing. Uh, there's some people who say scripted and they mean different things. So I'll just say exactly what happened uh, for this video and all my previous videos. So basically what we do is we record the events of the servers. Or at least, uh, I'll talk about this one specifically. So we recorded, uh, we dropped everyone, thousand players on a map with, you know, some guidelines. Uh, basically one of the rules was you can't RDM, which means you can't like kill people randomly. Uh, another rule was, uh, I think we had a bunch of like manipulations of, uh, actual Minecraft mechanics, so we banned actually most enchantments, so the most you can get on your armor was like protection one, uh, and this was to prevent people just spending the whole time grinding, you know, getting villagers and using uh, emeralds and whatnot, um, and instead more so, more so focusing on actually building a civilization and doing good roleplay. Um, we banned ender pearls as well, because those make no sense in real life, um, and uh, Basically, yeah, we let players go, and uh, then once they're in the world, 
we essentially allow them to do whatever they want. Uh, you know, nations interact, people talk with each other, conflicts develop naturally. Uh, everything you see in this video, all the conflicts are basically 100% real. It's what actually happened. Uh, there are a few scenes, a few of them, uh, that when I really want to highlight and make more dramatic, I go back to them and either reshoot them completely, as in get a new video completely, it's still what actually happened, but in a more dramatic fashion, uh, or I just get new lines. I get people to go back, uh, I call them on Discord, and we give new lines. Uh, so that's an example, the Sultan lines is what we just talked about. Uh, so for example, and we'll get to it, the turkey death scene, the Alanilo and turkey death scene, that all happened. That was 100% natural. Alanilo actually suspected Turkey of, you know, wanting to lead a revolution. There was actually a meeting that happened, and uh, the, when the meeting happened, basically the first, like, half of the meeting is exactly as it was portrayed. But then, in the second half is where I completely changed things, because it was very, very quick what happened. Um, I want to talk about that more when we actually get to it, because at this point we're never going to finish this. <laughs> Included, wear proper attire, do not eat pork, complete your mandatory work, and most importantly, acknowledge the Sultan <laughs> I as love the, the Sultan supreme rules. and divine leader. Ryan, what was the hardest part about setting up slash running Since editing this event? it was still hard to get food in the dry climate, the people of the Sultan had focused on developing uh... different types of food production, like fishing in the surrounding ocean. On top of this, a player named Dr I'd say it was, uh... During recording, the, when I was recording the event, it was uh, trying to make sure that the story that results is one that people from YouTube will enjoy. Um, so my goal is to keep everything, you know, 100% natural, but I at least want a good story. So I didn't maneuver anything except for the very end a little bit, and we'll talk about that later. Uh, but I think just during the recording with so many freaking people uh things you can imagine get a little chaotic so it was my goal to let people do whatever they want but also make sure that you know i can make this into a feasible youtube video um i think that's actually what my videos are known for the ending uh the impactful endings in the you know Season uh, 1.5 video with Wood Daddy and Thanos Chicken, that epic ending with the prison video with the whole prison friggin' erupting, and uh, with this video. So, yeah. Rip Chicken made a chicken market, although when I checked also, it out myself, it turned out to be a very different introduction type of, of market. Chicken. Welcome to Los Pollos Hermanos. <laughs> Thank you. Would you like uh, some totally legal sugar? Anyway, we finally go uh, back at this point, to the Snow Island. As I was flying around, I had I no idea. I, only describe I had no idea what Los Pollos Hermanos was. I didn't know it was a Breaking really Bad reference. About 20 minutes into editing this video, Jaw gave me a, a profile on his Netflix account and made me watch Breaking Bad. And then, like, after the 20 minute mark in this video is when I under... I, I was like, wait a second, Los Pollos... Isn't that from my video? Didn't someone make a Los Pollos Hermanos? True, Drew. I drip chicken should have been <laughs> shut up <laughs> uh that i finally found out oh my god this is brilliant i'm gonna make a whole scene about los pollos hermanos and uh there's a lot of breaking bad references I mean, by the players look at my little friend over here you know <laughs> wait who's your friend underneath oh yeah the shrimp oh, yeah, the shrimp storyline <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's chilling. oh he's up here now <laughs> no no, my fish buddy. Please go back down. <laughs> Despite the killer powdered snow and the occasional polar bear, the, the twins is too, Island yeah. Were That's right, and pretty Dole. well building settlements together. Nobody was fighting because everyone had one this common is true, enemy, Joe. Very harsh true. climates. That being said, it turned out that all of these snow settlements might be a bit more than just little communities. On day two, rumor was getting out about a conspiracy <laughs> that, despite them all being spread out across the entire island, a lot of these We'll just watch these scenes through first and then I'll comment about it. By one single person. Elan Yulo. His goal was to unify Emmanuel. the entire Elan. snow island under one Elanuelo. mighty empire. This person's name was Elanulo and he was running this entire empire recruitment operation from, from an, an underground, underground bunker, bunker where he felt he was Thank you, Charm. Apparently Wood Daddy had a treehouse that wasn't included. He yeah, he did, he did. <laughs> with people who were already leaders uh, of the it 
actually, I did and feature one B-roll shot of him in his treehouse. So I forgot where exactly the video together. it was, but he would give I did show it at least one shot. And in exchange, they would be guaranteed high-ranking positions in the Empire. If this Empire actually succeeds in uniting all 300 people on the Snow Island, it would easily become the most powerful nation in the world. In fact, it would be bigger than the Sultanate and the two planes democracies combined. Will this ambitious plan actually succeed? Let's see what happens in the following days. So, I will let this play. Okay. Quals. Hey, I watched a lot of the videos. This one was credible. A storytelling ability. It was, uh, I hope to see more of you soon. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, Quals. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's talk about the Alanulo bunker. Uh, so. Here's what happened. Uh, Alanulo really was, you know, the emperor of the Aculot Empire, and he really did recruit everyone from the Snow Island. Basically all the people. I think there was, like, a few very small groups that were in snow, but not a part of Aculon. You are, thank you, baby carrots. <laughs> uh, but Alanilu wasn't able to log on to the server for the first six days. Something like that. He was never on the server. He wasn't able to. I actually still don't know what he was doing or why he wasn't able to log on. Uh, but. <laughs> He was directing everything from Discord. He was... Uh, oh, uh, amazing for the leaders of Very Nation. Did he ever stop them from doing anything crazy? Uh, I think event staff might have had to a few times. Uh, whenever, you know, someone was about to, like, go absolutely crazy for no reason. Yeah, they had to stop him, talk to him. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, but <laughs> back to Alanilo. Yeah, so Alanilo was directing everything, but... Oh, vacation plus broken computer, got it. He was directing everything from Discord. So he wasn't in an underground bunker or whatever. This is something that we just built post to help show Alanilo directing everything from far away. Uh, because it would, obviously, it would be very, uh, lame to show Alanilo in a Discord voice call, uh, talking with four different Discord users. Uh, so, <laughs> Discord is underground, exactly. So, yeah, we just did this instead. Um... I think this is a lot better of a way to do that. Could you please address the allegation that you've been spending this money on gem... All right. Moving on. <laughs> uh, let's see. Any follow-up questions here? Uh, I think... Okay, I'm just going to move... Uh, questions... I'll answer miscellaneous questions at the end. Uh, because I need to get through this freaking video. It's so empire, long. So they would be I'm just going to keep playing it. Uh, day three we're on. We've now covered the politics of every island except for the jungle. So jungle what's is going just crazy. Here? <laughs> well, quite frankly, I had no freaking idea. It was chaos. There were about thirty Hateful. different camps what shader and tribes spread out across the uh, entire island. For most of the video, island, silders, and a lot shaders, of them were in silders. Constant fights with each other. Oh. There were some parts, what's the, what's like the final on? battle, where I used a um, Here's a tribe that BSL, one of their own members for being quotes. But most of this was Silders. I say we tax them and then let them out of jail. <laughs> well, them boots, okay. take your shoes. <laughs> so overall, there was chaos. Nobody trusted one another, and to add to this, nobody wanted to travel too far into the jungle because they were scared of rogue tribes and especially hostile mobs. Please, In fact, yeah. we actually had to remove creepers <laughs> on day three because they were killing too many people. This is true. Creepers killed an incredible now, amount of people actually, actually not just in the jungle and in, i think in all the, the biomes that had creepers river which i think was most called the sea people the sure. leader was killed almost immediately by but a, a random lot of them tribe. from the new leader yeet speak a lot of the creeper deaths were actually underground i remember that much yeah dedicated his rule to maintaining order but and some of them were a bit buggy so we did we removed creepers because they were a bit buggy and they were killing too many people and number two uh, i saw someone ask well if you remove creepers how do people get to uh, we actually made skeletons uh, drop both gunpowder and, I think, music discs? I forgot, but uh, yeah, we had skeletons. <laughs> also to keeping taking that load for the creepers up events like stand up comedy nights i got a few jokes <laughs> about unemployed people oh wait none of them work 
This, this was funny influential to tribe watch. was located in the dead center of the jungle, and it was what appeared to be a faction revolving around the worship of a <laughs> player named Seth. Hello, Mr. Seth. Oh, this interview is all so real and in game. <laughs> oh, this is just creepy. You're telling me this isn't a personality Charm? Cult? Charm, what do you do? Nah, Here you go, Ish, more money that. to spend on... I'm not... Life, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, as I was flying around... <laughs> Thank I you, Charm. I appreciate this it. Guy again. I'm gonna take over the world. <laughs> Believe it or not, he had actually become the leader of a pretty impressive settlement. <laughs> Granted, there's a lot of inter I think out of Colonel I think out of most uh, this, uh, like, really cool tower thing that we're building here? like yeah, it looks yeah. great yeah, yeah, nations yeah, yeah. that it's I spent cool. spectating I, I think Wazix might have been the most uh -huh. really Chetis Ish did you better pause the quartermaster part and show your respect to several hours <laughs> God Chetis I don't know how you guys did it honestly <laughs> Could you tell us what they said? I don't know who would do that, short, two but of maniacs. Members built a Drew, tower, Death to Wabafet Theory, and, and, and Happy Now, <laughs> now when I talked to the librarian, <laughs> they just said Wazik just doesn't like the library because he's illiterate. As I said, drama. Now, the jungle wasn't Real the drama only there. place having problems. The Plains Island was seeing both a surge in development, this whole place is awesome, but also a rise Tavern in tension. Tavern was awesome. The leader of one of the Plains democracies, Horace Crown, had found out that the other Plains this is all nation, true, basically, run right, by Sidefall, had reached out to the Snow Island. They were all super suspicious about alliances. Sidefall reaching out to uh, Snow. Horace Crown did not like that Sidefall was reaching out to other Churchy, islands my instead sister, of reaching what? out to him. So he quickly established his own alliance with oh, two other Plains Oh my god, what exactly happened to the server after the event? located on the east side. God, Churchy, I just read my sister is dying, and then my heart just... <laughs> Churchy, for the love of God. <laughs> uh, what happened after the server? Well, I'll get to that toward the end of the video. Oh of my god. Island, would essentially cut off Sidefall's <laughs> access to most of planes if a war were to break I'll out. I'll get to that when it gets to the post war, don't worry. <laughs> the people living on the Plains Island, who had otherwise taken their peaceful lives for granted, were getting very worried about a potential Balanza, I'd like to support war your jet would devastate their homes. During KFC, we went family, not war. <laughs> Meanwhile, this is, this is on the desert ridiculous. island, the Sultan <laughs> Storming Hell was not happy when he discovered that a group of mountaineers had made their home on the and then they argued. The I was Sultanate. in the Discord call when the uh, they were having this. To discuss this dispute over land. Why does the yeah. Sultanate have any more right to a plot of land? Simply when they were having this dispute. Stronger, I'm not a gemmer. So if it comes down to it, maybe Clash. Of, I don't gem in People Clash in of Clans. were starting to get worried about gems. Storming Hell's tyrannical nature, so some of them moved to a quickly growing democratic nation on the other side of the island. Uh. Not a lot of Sultanate citizens moved. Uh, Theria was its own thing well before the Sultanate started acting quote-unquote tyrannical. Uh, they were its own nation, and I think their architecture might have been the best in the whole server. Maybe Aculon, uh, but... Theria this was just incredible was looking. The name derived from the Greek word for freedom. I asked their elected president, Saps, about the Sultanate. Hopefully we can establish Greek Byzantine, I think. for now. I mean, we're in the middle of a desert. Why fight, you know? Overall, each island had its own conflict between the desert's Sultan dominance, the plains' alliance disaster, the jungle's total chaos, and the snow empire's takeover. At least one of these conflicts was bound to erupt <laughs> very soon. And, and that, that conflict, conflict was, was planes. At the beginning of day four, a propagandist told everyone that Sidefall was- I think those are all real messages. I'm pretty darn sure. Trink top. I actually don't remember because I edited this a while ago, but... ...was about to attack I'm, the I'm pretty sure. Island. Th that's one that I actually don't remember. I, I might have- I might have done the tell raw on those. We'll see. But Tringtop was actually the propagandist that nearly started the war. To Drew, I think. At least, I think that's what the Plains leaders told me. Drew, I'm not... Everyone on Plains was freaking yeah. out, including these guys at the center of the Plains Island. Who You're giving me money for gems. Isn't that counterproductive? To the tavern. For your purposes. You enjoy a nice beer <laughs> oh, mindless. <laughs> The tavern was fantastic. <laughs> so at this point, it might have been my favorite, what like, single was building. Sidefall actually doing? Or, like, well, place. Well, it turns out Sidefall was just as confused as everyone else since he had no plans <laughs> to attack Some anyone. of these shots were the propagandist shot post. Lied. I have no clue what these guys are talking about. I don't want to attack anyone. I don't want a civil war. You were framed. I can't <laughs> believe it. So now, both sides were gearing up for a war over nothing but a miscommunication. And all throughout, Sidefall was desperately trying to reach out to the other players. 
Lane's leader saying that he didn't want war. The other leaders doubted him, but they actually agreed to meet with him as long as they met on neutral ground. Boom! The tavern. Whoever told you guys I want war is lying. Tell us the truth then. I think those lines were post. I think I had them act those. While they talk, because I don't think I attended much of the meeting. Horace Crown secretly had oh, But that's all real footage. Search, Charm. <laughs> Not nah, I'm gonna stick his top donator. Get out of here. I do have a quote. What, what was your favorite scene? Uh, favorite scene? I think it's probably the Aculon battle, the Battle of Aculon, but uh, there are a lot of close contenders. The Turkey Alanilu meeting, uh, the Wazik pit trap, uh, the Davert assassination attempts. I think those were definitely in the top five. Entire village. Post war, I also really like the epilogue. It's not. A bunch of TNT under his village. I don't think that's true. I don't think that happened right before the meeting. I think somewhere, somehow, there was TNT, but I'm not sure if it happened on this day exactly. True. I ain't completed. But before things went too far. <laughs> Guys, I'm just reviewing Folks, my video. Why are you giving me money? Shaw, if no, don't do not do that. By the thinnest of margins, crisis was averted. That line After was acted, talking, I know that. The leaders but this meeting did actually happen. This was all real footage, 100 percent real. Uh this is where they made the planes a lot Oh my god. Holy crap, <laughs> Cha, I, I hate you. <laughs> uh, it was during this meeting where they made the Plains Alliance, which was actually called FedEx. Uh, and that, I think, was a play on Sidefalls Nation being called UPS, which is another delivery service, the United Postal Service. Qualls. Whoa, hold my... Two Drew. Two Drew, what are you going to do about this? <laughs> Qualls, thank you. Oh my gosh. This is freaking crazy. Tudor, you're <laughs> Had made a peace treaty. I actually didn't get to see much of the meeting, but yeah, here's essentially what happened. <laughs> Sidefall first apologized to the other planes leaders for not being open with them, specifically about his relationship with the Snow Island. He yes. told them he had only reached out to Snow in hopes to get on the good side of a player named A Freakin' Tur Turkey's first appearance only comes in like 14 minutes into the video, but this is how he's introduced. By being a... Sidefall contact. Turkey, who was apparently Alanulo's second in command. The planes leaders discussed their disagreements on foreign relations, Horace Crown preferring keeping alliances within planes, and Sidefall believing in making allies on other islands. But they were able to put their differences aside. They banished the propaganda from the like... island. <laughs> yeah, and that's the end. Yeah, the it. four major planes nations created uh, a great. I think this meeting actually alliance. ended in peace the because both sides. The brink of Charm, Paul's and Tudor, you both are absolutely suck. I'm just a student. <laughs> well, Charm's out of the race. Um, I think they came into this meeting with peace in mind. Because I think day, at this point, Sidefall had already told them on Discord that, no, I don't want war. Um, so the meeting was going to probably go well. Tui Tuji's a good nation name. You have to agree because I'm paying for your smooth. I hate Even the jungle was at peace at the end of day four, since the remaining jungle people were just thankful that they were still alive. A lot of nations were at war pierce oh my god this is going to be so useful for kahoot v2 oh yeah exactly yeah Pier uh pierce messaged me earlier about making a kahoot for the next community meeting i believe uh we're gonna do a, a quiz for season two just like we did in the first three videos so uh, let's get studying lord ezio really uh found your channel extremely good uh looking forward to more thank you very much thank you lord i appreciate it <laughs> why do i have a polish flag i just realized <laughs> And soon though anyway. it was the next day, but before we let people back onto the server, uh, the it Ryan Two Drew's calling his bank, please. <laughs> uh, good question. I also saw this in chat. Uh, we had the Middle Island in uh, from day one. Legacy. Unlike Ish, I am a true man of the people by being open about my gemming. Ish cowers in fear about gem. One time to Salem too. Uh, this week, hopefully, D Legacy. You. you. Uh, Pretend this is from Charm. Let's sell. 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 
All right. <laughs> I could buy a whole Wii U game with that. <laughs> Thank you, so. Selling his freaking bees. Yeah, we'll get to that later. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's keep going. Uh, to answer your question, though, uh, yeah, the Middle Island was actually in the world from day one. Uh, the reason players didn't reach it was because we actually had barriers around each island uh, that they weren't able to, they basically weren't allowed to leave or travel too far away from their island uh, until day seven. On day seven, we unlocked all barriers and players could go anywhere. We added a Which is also when people discovered the middle the island. center of the world, and we didn't tell the players that we did this. We wanted to see who would discover the island, Shut how close. long it would take to find, and then what would happen next. So, we started up the server, and the wait began. But meanwhile, we have to talk about the snow island. Oh my god. So you've done me proud. Hello, hey. Turkey. Freaking Hello, Itch. How's it going? This interview is all real with Turkey. Freaking Turkey finally gave me a full explanation of the mysterious snow empire, which I found out was named the Aculon Empire. Still fearing for his safety, the Empire's founder, Alonso, gave orders entirely <laughs> yeah, from his yeah, secret underground your bunker while your his second in command. Again, no secret underground bunker. Go previously in the video if you want to. Uh, see my explanation about that, but Alanula was still directing things entirely from Discord, not in-game. Uh, Ryan Bro's just glad his birthday- <laughs> Yeah, very true! And very, very true! Out his orders and led the Gosh. people on the ground. You Turkey did lead people the on the ground, island. indeed, yes. There is a lot. Uh, just know, none of it was made by slaves. <laughs> the Empire relied on strict I think he did actually say that peace. in the interview. It's now two He's a very funny man. <laughs> each assigned a daily job, like building, mining, or fighting. And they were assigned they were online, jobs. All citizens were required to be in two Discord voice channels at once. I'll explain that real quick. Profile cabinet Ishba. Uh, one, the first Discord server that they were in was just their uh, team calls. So they had cohorts and... Uh, each one about like five to ten people and uh, they were always in their cohort call but they were also in another discord server everyone was required to be in a uh, discord website browser or whatever uh where they could actually join another discord server at the same time and that one was purely for i think aculon wide announcements uh i'm not jaw i hate uh <laughs> and basically everyone would be in the same voice channel but only high-ranking officials were allowed to speak and it was only for like big announcements like if the empire was attacked or something then everyone would know immediately uh you know to get in position because they'd all be in that one voice channel which i didn't even know was possible it was a very also, very cool empire uh made it a point to document system of communication including its list of members its hierarchy yeah this is all true landmarks but what a lot of sent these to, was the to me and I was very impressed. Going on in this seemingly regular building. This singular building is the richest place in the entire Char. server. They called this the Quartermaster's oh house, and it was where the I that probably Empire true. not only collected and stored <laughs> all its resources, but also distributed items using a complex request system, where, for example, a citizen asks think... for iron ingots, and then the Quartermaster's decide exactly how much iron that citizen deserves. If I stop acknowledging it, then developed. he'll stop. <laughs> I, I'm too Drew. Place? Uh, no, no more, yet. no more. Let's no. just say, if you tried to get in without permission, <laughs> you're not gonna it's get a freaking very nice ridiculous. Walk. And I kid you not, just a few minutes later, this player, Xelius, was caught trying to sneak his way in, and he was sent to- That shot Great vid was all- was staff all volunteer slash did they get paid. Holy crap. Dever. <laughs> Uh, some of the teams were volunteers, some of them were paid. So, uh, developers, obviously those were paid. I think I, I just went by, you know, what's standard, basically. Um, let's see, volunteers, I think, yeah, event staff volunteers, uh, builders, I think, volunteers. Uh, who else? Oh, applica- oh my god, application. Applications team, I should have paid because that just sounds miserable. But no, those guys were all volunteers. <laughs> I don't know- I don't know who enjoys going through 8,000 applications. Um, and, uh... No other teams are coming to mind, but, uh... The vast majority of people who worked on this were- did it entirely because they found it fun. Ender said it's so fun. I- I- I don't- to be held you are not human. Day. 
but thank you, Denver. I really appreciate that. Seriously. I'm a happy man. Oh man, look at him. Snow Island continues to be hyper vigilant about criminals, but so were other nations, like the Desert Sultanate, which made an inescapable prison. He is surrounded by lava. Or Wazak's nation in the jungle, which made a giant sand trap. Oh, this is evil. Just you wait until we have a nice little. The Wazak sand trap. We'll get to that when the big scene comes. Uh. I have, a, I have something to say about that, something to clarify about that. Uh, you should skip the court. No, the quartermaster. Yeah. Uh, good. Thank you for reminding me, Chetis. All, uh, Aculon was made up of a lot of cohorts or teams. The quartermaster cohort, all those people did was stay in the same hut for the entirety of the freaking experiment, the entirety, all the days. They spent, I don't know what, at least 24 hours together in that one building legacy <laughs> and all they would do is receive items and exchange items and give out items based on their uh based on their google form i don't know how i don't know why it was incredible a little deliberation with some yeah. I'm gonna be put to death, you know. Like, <laughs> Even a little foreshadowing. Feel exactly safe as this self-described. That was all real, by the way. Real interview. Wazik actually did predict he'd be put we to death. We want to make sure the communists can't. Twenty JP this away from and the capitalists. Well, I was talking to these guys. Charm. I got Karen Beck wanted to say hi, desert, but he has no money. <laughs> Thank you, happen. Karen Blanks. Uh, Shout out. This music. This is the first scene where I'm really, really happy with. It, it's like the first, I don't know, cinematic scene mission. where Their the music really has a big role. Of people that had been rumored to want to assassinate the Sultan. I, I really love this scene. Of the how it now. turned out. Hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. This is no I just like the jam. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. According to the Sultan, the people hiding in this little settlement were indeed the attempted assassins, and now the group had a decision to make. Oh, we're gonna Is kill this guy. Do we kill this guy? Up until now, there hadn't been any violence between desert nations. Will this be the breaking point? Uh, real quick. Let me go into my file here for that scene. I just want to show you guys one thing I did with the music. I wanted to make sure that I point this out so <laughs> sword boat. I'm not telling them about the sword boats. <laughs> John made fun of my editing for this scene because of my sword boats that I used to show the Sultanate militia, the Sultanate elite group traveling. Listen, I think my sword boats were perfect. Alright, uh, where's the scene? Where are we at? Third, oh no, we were further. Uh, further than that. Further than that. Here we are. Uh, sometimes what I did with the music is add just a little bit of emphasis on certain parts when the plot needed it. Uh, so, for example, this is what the song sounds like on its own. I'll just play it again real quick. This is the song on its own. And this is what I did. So I added a little underneath. Uh, I did that in uh, Audacity. Thank you, Sol- or not Audacity, in a- I don't know the program, I forgot the name. I just added that note. Uh, our friend, our favorite, <laughs> Flames Bartender, loved the editing. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, sometimes little things like that make it so much more effective, make, uh, these scenes much more effective. We are showing the desert that if you make plans to kill me, justice will come for you. The Sultan's elite squad spent the rest of the night raiding the settlement, <laughs> yeah, mine was, but during the chase of another suspected assassin, they Queen ran Noah. literally into a major dilemma. We know he is running to Syria. The guy they were trying to kill was running toward the democratic I nation of Theria to get asylum there. The Sultan is really she about to blow up on Theria. Holy. This could cause a major conflict. I have a near perfect pitch. Army I just care. can't sing. They barged <laughs> into Theria and started searched every single house to find this one person who ultimately ended up getting away. Meanwhile, the people Queen, of Theria Queen were freaked out by the raid, but when they looked to their leader Saps for guidance, he was nowhere to be seen. He had fled. I don't actually know if he Eventually, fled. The he might have just left, not been there. Theria was That's not something I'm not sure about. To forget this. He might have just been elsewhere. A lot of people like this transition that's coming up.
Is he dinner? Blow up the quartermaster's house. Zellius betrayed our people. And this speech was recorded post. He didn't actually say these. Uh, we did this together later. But this, uh, yeah. he must die. Glory to Aculon. Let me real quick go back to the music for that. Uh, there, I did it again. Baby carrots ish make carrot weapons of math. <laughs> so people fear your name, huh? All right, I'll uh, I'll, I'll uh, consider it. Uh, here we go. All right, this is the song on its own in that scene. And then I added a little ball. So I made that. And then together, you get a lot more impactful effect when the player dies. People. And for this, he must die. Glory to Aculon. Oh, it was a no haste. Oh yeah, there's no haste in the video. <laughs> the execution was successful, but the Empire didn't Regarding that execution, it didn't go as a flawless as that. Xelius so actually started digging underground, and he managed to get system. pretty get far away. Seat, he wasn't killed by the spike, as I showed it. Uh, I just showed that because it was way too much and too long, but yeah. Uh, Xelius actually started digging underground, but two drew caught up to him and killed him. But do you know it is quite <laughs> That was a little uh, shortening, a little simplification I did there. Afterward, a freaking turkey took his guard to He got away for like two minutes before two drew hunted him down. He claimed weren't producing enough food for the Empire. I swear, this is all real. I will not miss any payment <laughs> it was very funny to watch this as well. Turkey threatening the poor farmers. <laughs> I expect five stacks of bread delivered within one to two business days. <laughs> Even Turkey though he was, was a little tyrannical at times, do you plan on uploading the music? Was actually becoming very uh, well liked it's all in public. The Aculon Empire Look in the pinned comments of the original video. Done, I listed all the music in there. Speaker. Fellow citizens, <laughs> this it wedding. is my distinct <laughs> honor to pronounce Steve and Pixel as husband and wife. <laughs> See, even though he was only the Turn second in command of the Snow's Aculon Empire, many people were starting to view a freaking Charlie as a better candidate the, for leader than Alanulo. The builds in this event were incredible. Even seen Honestly, Alanulo, maybe the best in any civilization event I've ever seen. Afraid of being assassinated. People were in fact, some of his own citizens weren't even sure he existed. Um, Alanulo ruled from afar, only talking with high-ranking officials. Nothing really to explain here. Turkey uh, was considered a man of the people. Someone who we allowed people to, to use schematic. In fact, a freaking turkey no has so much variety that uh, we allow people to use a schematics to plugin or a rather than schematic Alanulo. clients so as a result uh, that allowed them to map this, out was builds that they wanted to create, and that really helped. Uh, Milanto, you should ask Turkey about his time on SCP. So what? And its entire <laughs> I don't know what that is. System. Light and Matic, that's called. Thank you. I am alive. I will be its only ruler. <laughs> so again. Uh, this was shot post. Alanilo was never in the bunker. He was in Discord, uh, directing everything, but the bunker is the way we explain that. For more on that, go, uh, previously in the video. Earlier. That's very funny. <laughs> our, our monkey religion, we hold fast to it. <laughs> is there a continuation of this world? No, Here no. The jungle island, There's no part two, unfortunately. Slowed down one bit. Amidst the chaos, this small group had made a monkey religion, <laughs> and their goal was to build the biggest tree in the entire world. The We're monkey small, never stopped. industrious. While everyone else is John likes this transition. Other, we are peacefully building. Oh, the By next now, one, every go. tribe in the jungle seems to have its own goal. <laughs> Where'd you find the music? On uh, Epidemic Sound. This group called the Blue Cross I have a subscription to Epidemic Sound. To refugees. Meanwhile, Wazak's goal, which was still to take <laughs> over the world, was seemingly driving him mad, especially after the librarians built a second tower. <laughs> you did this out of spice, didn't you? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, no. Well, yeah. <laughs> Overall, it seemed like there was a lot on Wazik's mind. Suzuki as if he was and Pickwick. Something. Something. Also, my big. friends. Meanwhile, Seth, 
Earth and the Sea People were still there. the two biggest tribes in the jungle, and both pursued very innovative political strategies. For example, Seth got married, but only so he <laughs> could parade around the jungle wedding. and demand wedding gifts from everyone. And you know what? It freaking worked. The Sea People, on the other hand, had taken on a massive goal, which was to finally end the chaos in the jungle. And they did this by sending out stealth groups and hunting down uh, thieves, no, Moon, murderers, it was and really just what was convenient. Claimed did wrong. In this scene, However, I was talking about miscellaneous groups, so I took the opportunity to throw a blue cross in there. Were actually allies of Seth. In response, Seth demanded that the Sea People stop their initiative immediately, but the Sea People plans to continue. All of a sudden, the jungle island was on the verge of a There's massive war, as if there wasn't enough chaos already. Uh, day seven, I think might be my second favorite day. Because it's short, it's just two scenes, but both of them, I, I just got so freaking lucky with the music that I found. Uh, it, it's just already. such a jam. Both the songs in day seven. <laughs> Wait, is someone actually here? I think so. Whoa, this is crazy, this is awesome. Hold on, what's up? On day seven, a player named the Pokemonkey discovered the secret fifth island. The Pokemon island did, yeah. a mysterious dead That's terrain, all real. a small pre-built village in the center, and underground, it contained netherite, which is the strongest and rarest resource it was in rare. the world. The, ra the netherite was very sparse because we didn't want now, people getting too much of it, but was it was there. It was in the mines. In Plains, and he quickly alerted Sidefall about the very strange and <laughs> unexpected discovery he just made. He's taking the blue Pokemon lantern key. so people will leave him. <laughs> Guys, I'm not lying. There really is an island. <laughs> Two minutes later, another person uh, found yeah, the random center dose. island. This time, you can see in the, the, the later like jungle shots, uh, Yeats Peak was wearing another right chest started plate. arriving, typically either alone or in small and and later in like the video, there are some the plains people wearing another. It was very islands rare and again. Nations, nobody was fighting. In fact, they seemed to be forming friendships and simply admiring this new mysterious place. He's saying this is amazing. Quickly, word began <laughs> spreading across the world that there was a fifth island. And about 30 minutes into day seven, basically everyone knew. It was crazy how fast everyone found out. Now, some nations were hesitant about visiting, believing that the island was That's some true, sort of trap. While but I think Sol left you and and I took it away. <laughs> I don't think he got that from the center island. Groups to investigate <laughs> he could have had So Aculot is here, but instead of mining for netherite, they're taking the wool from the tents. <laughs> oh, they don't have sheep in the snow island. That makes sense. <laughs> Something I found interesting was that no nation, not even the Snow Empire, had the courage to publicly claim the center island as part of their nation, as their territory, probably because it would result in conflict with other nations, which I think was my uh, Horace Crown's nation, the island that it would cause some type of war, tried to claim this didn't eventually, war. or maybe I'm not entirely sure what happened with that. Yet. I think event staff was like, no, you ain't doing this, because I think it was trying to go to war or something. I don't know. I don't know exactly what happened Meanwhile, there. I present to you the story of Los Pollos Hermanos. Los Pollos Hermanos. <laughs> wow, you've really expanded your business. Yeah, we're doing So, this scene I edited uh, after watching Breaking Bad, as you can probably tell. <laughs> It was at this point during the editing of this video when I had already binged the entirety of Breaking Bad and yeah. Doing quite well. Because I had to. was such a big problem in the desert, <laughs> Drip Chicken had made it his life's mission That's to feed the, the video. people of the desert. 100%. And ever since I spoke with him on day two next to his little food stand, <laughs> Los Pollos Hermanos had become a staple of the Yeah, Sultanate. Jesus was in there actually. But this business would soon run into some problems. <laughs> See, on days four and five, the Sultan Storming Hell was unsatisfied with the slow progress on his build project. It was taking the them a while city. to build that. So he demanded that the farmers of the Sultanate stop growing food and instead work on his build project. And just like that, the food supply going into Los Pollos Hermanos had just completely that. stopped. The ja. restaurant suddenly had no food available to sell. 
Having farmers no worked on the build was instead forced to sell some questionable products. And These shots I think I did post because I didn't get any of this uh, in game. I didn't capture any of this. I <laughs> showed Drip Chicken selling drugs in his underground. Uh, he was caught selling these products by either the Sultan or the Sultan's twin guards. He would probably receive a life sentence. Sultan's twin Sultan guards, prison. more brain and ground reference. The farmers of the Sultanate were unhappy since they wanted to farm, not be forced to build. So, in a rebellious move, you like move that transition, by the way? Five, I don't know if anyone ever noticed this one. Look at the farmer. He's farming. Farm, not be forced to build. And now he's mining. So in a rebellious move on day five, Drip Chicken and the farmers secretly set up a meeting with Saps, the leader of Theria. This all happened over Discord. Uh, they were never in this tunnel. Again, I wasn't going to show just them talking in a Discord call. Uh, so yeah, we just put together this scene instead to represent kind of how it would happen in game. I know you want to move to Theria, but if you do, the Sultan <laughs> will send his elite squad to hunt you down. So, what do we do? Go to planes or something. There's about to be chaos in the desert. And Zaps was correct. There was about to be chaos in the desert. For reasons he couldn't tell the farmers just yet, but he did tell me. How many IRL you know hours was each day? Yeah, I think uh, so. He's anywhere from like guards, right? two He's about to, to leave three the about and join was their me. typical range. <laughs> really? The two people the Sultan trusts the most are his two twin guards. <laughs> the twin the guards. Brothers, Davrit and Zamta. But one of them had grown tired of the authoritarian and warmongering way of the Sultan. So Davrit had reached out to the leader of Theria, and together they created the single I believe in the Jesus scene because uh, I have ever heard, and this was it just it. didn't fit First, with the rest Davrit of the scene. Leaves the Sultanate to join Theria. It was on day nine, Next, and it was just the Sultan too finds late. out about the betrayal and sends his elite squad to kill Davrit. Then, when the this elite squad is away hunting for Davrit, crazy. and the Sultan is therefore alone, Davrit will sneak back in. Into the Sultanate and kill the Sultan. Davrit will then claim leadership over the Sultanate, and as the new leader, he will finally bring peace to the desert. Davrit, there is sword no bone. way sword this works. Brother, Perfect. grow some chest hair. Trust me, you'll work, alright? So, at the end of day seven, Davrit <laughs> that we out recorded the afterwards. and headed to Theria to begin the operation, while Drip Chicken and the farmers fled to the Plains Island. On their way out some of them took one final look uh all this video here i think we was also recorded after the event i don't think they actually left going that direction i don't think back at their homes <laughs> at their restaurant knowing that they would probably never see it again knowing that the story, story of, of los pollos hermanos had come to an end she took away donation messages i don't think i did Did I? I'd be sad if they weren't popping up anymore. Uh, I tried logging into my Streamlabs earlier, uh, but it didn't let me. But really, did they just outright stop? I'll check in. Uh, I don't know. Someone tried donating and let me know. <laughs> yeah, a I also day, had a donation there was a Really? All right, hold on. I got to fix this real quick. Uh, sh hold on. Uh, how do I do this? Let me go to stream. Hello. Uh, one second, one second. Uh, I actually don't know how much I'll be able to do because... Hold on. Stream. Labs desktop. Maybe that. Let me check it out. <laughs> I'm, yeah, this is my room, Jaw. Why are you claiming it's your room? It's taking me a while to update this. Uh, I'm going to keep playing the video. And uh, I'll pull these up in a second. Hold on. Alert box. Okay. Maybe it's just Streamlabs being down. But I'll make sure to read all donations at the end of the stream. Make sure you remind me. Uh, hopefully it'll fix itself though here. Uh, okay. Moving back to... Major right, event go. on the Snow Island. 
For the first time ever, Emperor Alanulo had come out from his underground Alanulo was bunker. finally able to go he online. Had the entire Snow <laughs> he was finally Island able to, to join the, the server. Castle so he could publicly be crowned as the leader. Before the coronation, all high-ranking officials were required to provide Alanilo a gift. <laughs> the ceremony they set up here was freaking amazing. Pair, the premium brand sneakers. Thank you. A lot of people are like, this is I definitely Baron scripted. Good no. To give you this present, the things Alanilo. the Aculot Empire I did, the ceremonies they hosted were present. incredible. <laughs> After the gifts, Alanilo asked his second-in-command, a freaking turkey, the sneakers to make a shot. speech affirming Alanilo's undisputed leadership. My friends, the Aculon Empire is the strongest nation in the world. Not because of one leader, but because of all of us. Thank you, Turkey. <laughs> At the end of the ceremony, Alanilo asked all of Everyone his citizens bowing. to follow him out of the castle they did down this, the yeah. main path of the Empire in a symbolic move meant I really enjoy the contrast. I don't think I've received any comments, but uh, I was wondering if anyone would say uh, how the entire Aculot Empire is walking down the path to showcase the unity of the But then Snow later Island. in the final battle, everyone would be walking up the path to the castle. A little bit of a reversal. But this image of unity was only a mirage. There was a lot of discontent building within the Empire for many reasons. People didn't awesome like that Alanilo's knights yeah. were constantly bossing them around, nor did the Aculon builders <laughs> like it when Alanilo forced them to work on the Aculon castle instead of letting them finish their own projects. There was this general sense that Alanilo might be overreaching with his power, especially when he started spying on his own citizens to see who was criticizing his leadership. See, Alanilo believed that I think the larger citizens to have the larger your civilization life, gets, to live in the more likely nation, it's basically impossible to not to have any defectors or people attempting revolution. Aculot Empire had over 200 leader. people in their this nation. Is why Alanilo was fearful it's, about it was very unlikely that there wasn't going to be a revolution eventually of some sort. Of his second in command, a freaking turkey. Oh, wait, are we back? Knowing that they were being spied on, many of a freaking turkey supporters oh. were becoming scared living Charm. on the snow Hold island. On. Uh, I think I got that. Uh, just give me a sec. Okay. Ah, okay, okay, yeah, we got some, uh, donations that I missed here. Uh, let me read this. Let me read this real quick. Pokemonkey. Wow, they got Aliums here. <laughs> Thank you, Pokemonkey, for the $5. Uh, Captain Magbar, $5. Absolutely love the uh, use of music in this video. Whether it's the doable use of that one track, Lanulus. Yes, the... I think it's called Magic Moon. Uh, didn't show on screen. Yeah, I know. Uh, sh shoot. I don't know why I broke all of a sudden. Uh, gotta love the scenes you came up with, put together. From people yell talking or yelling down over the mic in Discord. Thank you, Charm. That was the Charm for $5. Uh, Cell has tipped $5. Testing, testing. <laughs> Had the uh, charm, five dollars test Wabafet L. Okay, um, well at least I'm able to read your messages. Uh, hopefully it renews here. Uh, we'll keep Afraid going for now. That they would be executed for not supporting Alanilo's leadership. So with the help of a freaking Turkey plus another high-ranking official, its Ender, some Aculon citizens oh, organized secret <laughs> evacuations. <laughs> Out of the snow island through underground tunnels, some of which led to Seth's nation in the jungle, others going to Sidefall's nation in plains. Both Seth and Sidefall were very open to accepting refugees, especially yeah. those who opposed Alanilo, someone who they believed to be a dangerous tyrant. Also, they had just found out that Alanilo had actually the, uh... sent spies all across the world, including into their own nations. So right. they didn't uh, like him very much. There were spies. We're not going back until the alliance between Seth and Sidefall was the beginning of the. Uh, they called the their planes. alliance the Mr. Bastion Turkey, of Peace. Are you starting a revolution? No, no, no. I do not want a revolution. I, I didn't include that because it didn't make much sense. People. Like a bastion is a place. Wouldn't Probably really make sense. Probably tomorrow because I'm gonna try and host a meeting with Alanilo. I just think he's gone too far. So while just the allies was a much better name to represent what they have going. The rest of the day, Seth and Sidefall created the first. Ever yeah, this was multi island it. treaty. This treaty for not dinner, only Astra? established Seth and Sidefall as allies, mm, but it also declared their nations <laughs> refugee states, ones that are willing to accept all.
all people fleeing from dictatorial regimes, regimes like the Sultanates or the Aculon Empire. As for a freaking Turkey's position in the Aculon Empire, he was still technically the second in command, but it was only a matter a of time was starting before to get a little Lionel suspicious. finds out about the missing citizens, and then it's very likely that Turkey will be stripped of his position or be kicked out of the Snow Island entirely and become a refugee himself. Magic Moon, the Aculon theme. Yeah, I don't know if... <laughs> Wait, is that a basketball court? <laughs> on day eight, the center island was getting People did the randomest things on the center island. And instead of fighting each other, everyone was just kind of hanging out and doing their own thing. Uh, look at this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what is this? Don't question Don't me. Go. There he is. <laughs> Later that night, some adventurer started the only thing the cell did, I swear, was green. just go around every place These guys, and showcase made his a bees. underground church and they hosted many <laughs> ceremonies and cultural events. What type of ritual is this? Now, I actually attended I think this was the church of Bald day, Unleashed the second one inside underneath Bald the Nation. center island. Although, I was very disturbed the by the value of wheat was incredible. Zam Flying away with his bikini. I've known uh, flying away in Chief Blaze for since the Mindplex days. <laughs> Whoa! What did I do? They're <laughs> taking him away. <laughs> oh no! Later that night, the Plains Island received an unexpected visit from the Aculon Empire's state-sponsored journalist. Moved. I'm with the news. Oh yeah, the journalists. <laughs> Down with the news. Go away, Tad. There's some journalists in uh. Lost news today. They're kicking out the from the Acula <laughs> Empire. Oh Meanwhile, I ran into these plains farmers who there literally it is. did nothing the valley but plant of wheat. wheat everywhere. <laughs> oh my god. Look at all this freaking wheat. <laughs> now, right next to the wheat field was a cookie factory in Horace Crown's nation, which took the wheat and made a variety of baked goods. See, ever since the Great Plains Alliance was signed on day four, the, the bakery. people of Plains believed their island to be, for the most part, a very safe place to live. And as a result, many players felt secure enough to run their own businesses. Yeah, nothing there much bakery, really happened in Plains, at least compared to the other islands um, after that peace meeting. And I think there, there was, was the most recent edition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the return. You made one in the plains bio? Uh, yes. I think there was refugee status. some sort of trial of Sultanate farmers received of Sidefall on Day 7, but nothing really happened where they were with able to rebuild their in regard to that. Restaurants. And the people of Plains welcomed the refugees with open KFC arms. were between the Oasis and... Oh, yeah. I actually don't know KFC much about that. Who now had competition. I think, yeah, the two uh, anyway, minor Plains nations that I showcased almost went to war. The farmers had fled the or maybe they did. I just didn't see any deaths. Many the Sultanate were furious with these betrayals. While the Sultanate was still the alliance was a little bit a little bit unstable in the world the first being Aculon these betrayals of the Sultan it hurt the Sultan's public image and he feared being seen as weak there was a war one casualty got it by his own people <laughs> so predictably the Sultan sent his elite squad out into the desert to try to find and kill both Davrit and Drip Chicken but instead of staying home in the Sultanate this time the Sultan traveled with his elite squad Sultan this couldn't reach a uh to Davert's assassination drip plan, chicken, and Drip Chicken was on planes. had no choice but to keep hiding underground <laughs> This shot was real and it made me laugh. It was just hiding the underground, hiding Saps from uh, the Sultan. extremely worried because he knew that the fate of his nation and his people rested on How this assassination attempt. How long did it take that? Attempt. Many, many months. If the Sultan is killed, well, then all is well. But if it fails, it will only be a matter of time before the Sultan finds out that Saps was behind the plan, and then there is is no doubt that the Sultan will seek revenge a lot and of the time editing this video Theria, I might actually say Saps, most but all his people who was by the way were entirely innocent the Saps conceptual things didn't tell any of his citizens writing all the scripts in an assassination plot finding a way to first locate the main storyline such danger all of this tension but in the second was really present it in a way and write it in a like way this group, which that can be understood by anyone wall around their civilization that took me they an insane amount of time. Politics of the desert, and they were rather paranoid about everything. The it's it's surprisingly safe. difficult, at you least for me, the walls for to write things in a compact way. Everyone inside the walls is safe. Everyone outside is not safe. They're strangers. We shouldn't trust them. 
Oh, by the way, also don't push. And also match them with the music. Here. Okay. <laughs> I actually think this group was more of a cult than a civilization. I'm glad I was still, able to feature these guys, the Homestead. Right That's all they did, hide in their little uh, civilization with the lava wall. To the jungle war. Oh, here we go, here we go. I say I've got a lot to say about this major scene. nations had already basically decided that they cannot coexist in the jungle. Seth here we was go. mad at the sea people for <laughs> killing many of his allies, while the sea people were mad because Seth wouldn't let them kill those who they believed to be criminals. Neither nation was willing to compromise on this, so war seemed inevitable. However, because Seth had also recently formed an alliance with Sidefall from Plains, a war between the two Itchy jungle knows. nations would likely cause Sidefall, as well as the rest of the Plains Island, to join the <laughs> battle, that was very clear. thus yeah. turning this into RP. an actual world war. So, given that the stakes were so much higher now, both sides agreed to have one final meeting to maybe work things out. It was Wazak who quickly offered his nation as a good neutral location for the meeting, and he was quite enthusiastic about about hosting. On day eight, Seth and the Sea People sent their highest ranking officials to Wazik's nation where the meeting would take place. This was all, all happened. I think this might've been, right, was this on day seven? You're up first. I think this was on day seven I that think, this happened. Um, the Sea People are killing people for a lot of irrational reasons. So, you know, as an example, right? They had uh, five stacks of cookies taken from them. That takes okay. like- uh, This shot, I was in the Discord call when this all happened. Uh. But at some point, I actually cut away from the Discord call, and uh, let me play this first. This is all Discord call. To get, bro. This is and all during like, the actual meeting. Over Seth was confronting the sea people about killing people for reasons that he didn't deem were, you know, un enough, good enough reasons to kill someone. Why did he give it back, and he basically said no, so he was put on KOS and we killed him. So that was exactly what Seth just said. Let me, let me add true. some context. True. 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 I mean, yeah. I didn't. Soon the argument began. So that was the big uh, dispute between Seth and the Sea People. Uh, but here, everything after this point is recorded, not the video, uh, the audio, every the uh, voice lines between Seth and Yeetspeak were all recorded post. Uh, I needed a compact set of lines <clears throat> to feature in the video. Uh, they had to be short. And they had to just portray the message that, all right, we're going to war. They had to basically have a big buildup, uh, but in a compact way that's easy to understand and matches the music. Yeah, to escalate. And the people you attack. So all of these lines are scripted. This, these lines were scripted. These ones that we had here. I had the leaders read them, and uh, it, it was basically the only way that I could. Uh, Describe what happened in this pit scene without it being lame. We're direct allies. I'm sorry, but what other ways do but we the have video to of all this is real. This actually they did happen. This video. Over it. Do you really want to go to war over this? If you keep <laughs> killing our people, then we won't just stand by and watch. The music is all so right, hyped fine. for this. The sea people declare war. All right, let's do it. But before a fight could begin, Wazik yelled, "Double now!" Oh yes. <laughs> This is all. This, that was all real voice channel. Um, and the thing I appreciated the most about that is I didn't cut that ed or anything. That was all from here. This is all exactly how the voice chat reacted. But then, like. I don't know, by some miracle in the voice chat, everyone stopped talking and Wazik said, go, 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 go. Not only did he say that when everyone else stopped talking at that exact moment, but he said that five times and on beat to the song. Da, 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 da. Go, 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 go. He said it on beat. It's, <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> Listen to this again. I'll take it. Wazik had just killed seven people using his sand trap before getting away. The water clutched there by the pickle. decided to put their war on hold and declared a. Also, I think I vastly over, uh, vastly exaggerated 
uh, the war part. I don't think they were nearly as close to war as I showcased. Uh, the Wazik Sandtrap was a little bit more RDM-y. It was like half lore reasons, half RDM, because as you can tell in the previous part of the video, they'd been building that sand trap for a while without knowing that there was going to be a war. So they were just building it because they wanted to use it. And this uh, sort of near war experience basically allowed them, it gave them a reason to do it to where like it wasn't 100% RDM. Um, so they wouldn't get banned if they did it. So yeah, it, it was like <laughs> Wazik's motivations weren't entirely uh, pure as represented in the video, but I I made him look like a, a bit more of a hero than he actually <laughs> deserved to be seen. But uh, again, it made the story uh, more impactful, so that's why I made that decision. <laughs> Unified worldwide manhunt for Wazik. Everyone was confused about why Wazik did this, but then I remembered something Wazik had told me the day before. This interview Listen, we did post. If the wall this interview out, did not happen during the events. <laughs> really? Again, How this is just my way of explaining when Seth and the sea why he did this. Declared war on each other. Wazik decided <laughs> no, like to use his sand uh, yes, he is, and he make is. himself the, one the who villain, claims. so that the entire jungle would make peace to unite against him, therefore actually prevent a world war Wazik is now hiding underground 420 RDM <laughs> yeah exactly uh, I think after this Wazik first hit underground then uh, he swam to another island I think he was I think he fled to Theria I think he was actually planning on going to Theria in the desert uh, and cause more havoc there. But then he returned to the jungle. Uh, we'll get to that during his execution. I actually do know a little bit about what happened there. <clears throat> After spending oh, this most scene. of the previous day trying to hunt Two down his enemies, epic the scenes Sultan back Storm to back. Hell decided to take a break from the hunt and attend a wedding hosted by a small neighboring desert nation. The small neighboring desert nation. It was uh, it's a small nation on the shore, and its name was 2E2G. Do I even need to explain why I didn't use that name in the video? <laughs> It was a huge honor in the desert for the Sultan to visit your civilization. So there was a lot of buzz surrounding the Sultan's visit, and everyone in the desert knew he would be there. Zamta the twin guard was also at the wedding, and he was quite thankful for the break since he secretly despised having to hunt this for his own epic. brother. When the Sultan <laughs> demanded that Davert be tracked down and killed, Zamta was horrified by the I think by this point. Davert and Zamta were already working together, and I think Zamta was already planning to kill the Sultan. I'm pretty sure. Order, but he kept silent, fearing that he'd be next. Zamta could only hope that Davert was far away now, hiding in a place where the Sultan would I actually never think find Zamta, him. But it turned out Davert was not far away I think away Zamta actually knew that Davert would be coming. On a mission. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they coordinate this a lot more He's than actually here. how I uh, managed to explain it in the video. <laughs> this music. Davrit was coming <clears throat> to kill the Sultan, but he had to be sneaky I was, because the Sultan I was, was guarded so by his elite team. I was so freaking nervous the when this is actually happening live. Team off guard since Just being able to watch this, to the spectator. Him. He got so close there. I, the wedding I wonder if this would have played out differently had the wedding not ended right when Davert was about to attack. I wonder if Davert would have actually been able to kill Storming Hell. Oh, he's over. He's leaving. Oh, he's leaving. But Storming Hell managed to make it outside where there are a lot more people to protect him. This shot was 100% real, and I was so happy I was able to get it. It was just the most epic. <laughs> it just ascends. <laughs> oh, oh, Davert! He lobs him. 
Holy crap! <gasps> oh! He's hit him so many times! Wait, Stormy's getting away? The Elite Team is on Davern big time! <laughs> getting oh. some, some of these pre play match files was really fun. Zamta joins the battle. A little slow mo there. Oh. Effects inspired by oh, Mr. Beast Gaming. He's getting close. Oh, he turned around. Holy <laughs> crap. Everyone's here. <laughs> this is insane. Now, here. This shot's fake. This shot did not happen. In fact, Davrit actually didn't die until the final battle, the Battle of Aculon. This, this might have been the biggest fabrication that I've done, the biggest plot change <laughs> in the entire video. And uh, let's get into that now. Oh, Davrit's here. <laughs> so Davrit actually did not die here. What happened was he kept fighting all these, like, I don't know, there were like 20 to 30 people for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And I was like watching the whole thing. And then he swam into the ocean and like managed to get away. So it was like so intense and for nothing. <laughs> so... Uh, on the other side of this, on the other side of this, good question, why change that? Uh, let's go to Saps. In the video, in this video, I showcased Saps jumping off the Therian Tower. I'll just skip to that real quick here. There he goes. He's on top. This was real. But he didn't jump off the tower because... Davert died, and he saw Davert die, and his plan fail. He jumped out of he jumped off the tower at a completely different time. I think it was like earlier in the day, or like later in the day, or something. Because he had to go on vacation IRL in real life. <laughs> so, how do I explain that for the video? Well, then he had to go on vacation, and he wouldn't be able to play for the rest of the time, so he killed himself. How do I say that? <laughs> so, basically, I used the fact that Davert's assassination attempt failed. He didn't die at that very scene. He died at the Battle of Aculon. But I decided to move up his death a little bit to be there. Not only so I could have an actual impactful ending to that scene, but so I could also have an explanation for Saps' death that's not just he had to go on vacation. That right there, I think, was probably the biggest fabrication or, like, biggest plot change that I had to do for the sake of the plot line, for the sake of the video. I think it was... I think it was warranted. <laughs> If you guys disagree, that's fine. Uh, I totally understand. But that is what actually happened in that scene. It, it, in the whole thing, basically. So, yeah. <laughs> that is that is what happened. And correct me if I'm wrong. I think I explained that. Daver, I know Daver's here. Um, <laughs> Saf says, oops. <laughs> All right. So, let's just go back here to where I was. So yeah, all the footage from that was entirely real, except for the very end. Except for this, where I actually show him die. That we recreated. Oh. So yeah, all the, all the assassination, the, the entire assassination attempt on the Sultan was entirely real. Uh, I got the video that, that was all from actual in-game footage. It's just that very end, that very end that I had to completely change and uh, remake into another narrative just so it, would, just so it wouldn't be a lame uh, ending to that scene or as well to Saps' death. It gave me like a good reason to... It, it gave me a good reason for his death. Yes. <laughs> 
This, I think this footage is also real. Saps went into the thing, got rid of his armor, then jumped off the tower. That all actually happened, just not for the reason that I said in the video. <laughs> there he goes. And the next leader, Joe Fuel, standing there. By the way, uh... The fact that I changed the narrative there also kind of screwed me because <laughs> in the final battle, in the Battle of Aculon, Davrit was there amidst the allies. <laughs> so the whole time I was editing the final battle scene, the Battle of Aculon, I proactively had to make sure in every single shot that Davrit wasn't in it. <laughs> and I think, I think I screwed up in one scene. I uploaded this video for the first few for the first two days, nobody had noticed. Then I saw a screenshot earlier in the Discord of Davert in a shot. And we're gonna get to it. We're gonna get to it. But I swear I think I messed up in that single shot. I'm so mad because there were so many close calls. And I'm like, oh, oh, glad I caught that one. But I think I messed up in one shot, and we'll get to that. Salt is on his way back home, I think. What is happening? A fitting punishment. <laughs> <laughs> Zamta did kill this is all real Zamta did kill the Sultan right after the attempted assassination I think actually I think that shot was uh recorded post uh just so I could get a shot of Zamta kind of like staring over the Sultan um to show you know his in, his true intentions but he did actually die in that place and uh it happened in this manner yeah, there he goes. This, uh, from here, this is all, yeah, this is a real footage. <laughs> what? <laughs> By the way, uh, the way you can tell which footage, which video footage is real and which footage is fake, uh, if it has the chat at the bottom left, it's real. If it doesn't have the chat in the bottom left, it's recorded post. So you'll see a lot of interviews with players. There's no chat uh, on screen because I had uh, them log on after the event ended. That's how you can tell which footage is real and which is fake. <laughs> oh boy. Angry about the death of his brother Davrit, Zomta betrayed and killed the Sultan's I also really enjoyed the music for this. Oh boy. <laughs> of revenge. All of a sudden, within the span of a few minutes, Storming Hell, Saps, and Davrit were all dead. Both the Sultanate and Theria were without a... Yes, Egg in Orbit. Uh, both Zamta and Davert lived that day. But they both died in the actual battle. Leader, and the desert island was in a state of total confusion. Now, because the Sultanate didn't have a solid line of succession, there was a short power struggle <laughs> that ended Kingdom with the Sultanate one. getting completely dissolved. On day nine, the second most powerful nation in the world had fallen, and most of the Sultanate's citizens ended up fleeing. That being said, it wasn't totally the end. Some who were still loyal to the late Sultan decided to form their own militias, I think whose only goal was EJK, to track down uh, what were their names? and Emmet and the, the Sultan. Emer we are called by like our that. divine leader to kill the dirty traitor, <laughs> mashallah. <laughs> Theria, on the other hand, didn't dissolve and instead elected a new leader, a player named Jophiel, who was well like. Uh, good question. My epic. Uh, I'll explain that. Actually, yeah, I'll explain that during Still, the actual Turkey scene. The people would continue to when live did Turkey in a actually state of die? Fear, afraid they would be invaded by one of the new desert militias. Also, they would never find out why their founder Saps jumped off the Therian <laughs> Tower, which he did because of guilt. After he saw Daverit die, Saps Not true. believed that the Sultan he did would because he had to to go on vacation Theria, and he felt too ashamed knowing that he would be responsible it was only thanks to zamta that the invasion didn't happen <laughs> guilt <laughs> the death of the sultan sent shockwaves throughout not just the desert but the whole world many nations went on i like looking at this whole map including the Aculon empire it's nice to see everyone weren't allies emperor alanilo had Remember always their nations were sultan storming hell strong all together global foreign relations so after the lockdown alanilo sent his diplomats to the desert to offer support to the sultanate militias 
At the same time, on the plains island, Los Pollos transition of Los Pollos Hermanos was watching the desert from afar, and he was worried about these rumored desert militias. Because Drip Chicken was from the desert, he was able to educate his customers in plains about the politics of the desert. And after Saps's <laughs> death, he encouraged Sidefall Frickin to send diplomats to Theria story quickly, arc. and Sidefall did just that. Beautiful. On day nine, <laughs> Theria officially joined Seth and all the plains nations in the the refugee state contract and what originally started as a simple refugee agreement between Seth and Sidefall had now turned they are all into coming a together wide alliance called the Alliance of Democratic Nations it was called again the bastion of peace this alliance but again bastion of peace doesn't make sense <laughs> I think they originally named it bastion of peace because there actually was some sort of small bastion somewhere in the jungle that was, I think, their headquarters. Uh, but it just doesn't make sense for... That name just doesn't make sense for such a big alliance. So I talked with them and eventually, yeah, just decided on the Alliance of Democratic Nations. Or put simply, the Allies. As the people of the Aculon Empire continued their daily routines, the highest-ranking officials of the Empire gathered to discuss the new existential uh, dilemma they were now facing. Okay. The Aculon Empire I actually got to head out in like the most powerful an hour or so, and it still technically is. But when adding together the population, I think I could probably the skip states... this scene because there's not much to explain here. It's just more exposition. Uh. Yeah, Alani Lo being worried about Turkey. Uh, oh, okay, I'll explain this real quick. Uh, no. No, I'll explain everything on the Turkey scene. Never mind. Okay, it'll just be easier. Uh, all exposition, all exposition, replay mode. Uh, ah! We'll Alani just cut to the Wazik scene. ...to establish alliances with both the desert militias and with the sea people in the jungle. Alanilo appreciated the sea Talk people's the value of moment. order, what? and he promised that he will help them stop the chaos in the jungle and help them catch their number one most wanted <laughs> criminal, Wazik. The sea people Wazik? accepted this alliance, but they ended up not needing Aculon's help because late into day nine, Wazik decided to turn himself in. The reason he turned himself in, I believe, is at this point, he just he just didn't want to play. He'd done all that he did, and he was like, all right, I'm, I'm, prob I'm, I'm done with playing. Let's, uh, let's just go out. So I think what he did is he had a rock, paper, scissors match with, I think, one of the sea people or someone else in the jungle. Uh, and I think the conditions were if he wins, then he gets something. I forgot what, but if he loses, he has to turn himself in, and he lost. <laughs> so that's why he turned himself in, or at least part of the reason. He's about to be executed. A guilty <laughs> conscience, perhaps. All right, Wazik, I uh, understand you have a prepared statement. You may now read your final words. Uh, yes, thank you. He read a script in the execution. It wasn't this. This is one that I worked with him with, or worked on, worked with him on. Um, because, you know, time will never be your trusted friend. Uh, but yeah, he did read a script, and I think actually he dropped another script to Pink Wings 10 to read, to be read after he dies. I don't think I actually captured that, but from what I heard, it was long and it was beautiful. Hello, everyone. It's your old friend, Wazok. <laughs> In the beginning, I wanted to rule the world, but I've made some bad decisions. And now it's my time to go. You killed okay. innocents. People were, those, those real people were heckling him <laughs> during his speech. <laughs> can never be your trusted friend. <laughs> 
Long live the jungle. I think the first time he got knocked off here, someone at the bottom uh, placed down water bucket, so he actually lived. <laughs> so I teleported him back up to the tree and we did it again. <laughs> And there he goes. After deciding that being a criminal in hiding isn't how he wanted to live, and after losing Wazik rock paper scissors, chose to face his inevitable death on his own terms, and by doing so, <laughs> he gave the jungle one last moment of unity. Anyone else jumping? The conflict between the two major jungle I just thought that comments was funny enough to include. Especially now that they were in opposing alliances. Okay. Uh, again, because I'm a little short on time moments, now, uh, we could probably skip forward a little bit. The There's not much Most here to discuss. For example, the jungle's Blue Cross tried. Oh yeah, Blue Cross was big. International with at least one. Uh, Blue Cross, yeah, Blue Cross. I think was international from day one. That's how they decided to make their group. Uh, they they had one faction on each island, and yeah, all they did, I believe, was uh, offer food and. Uh, you know, resources to people in need. Charity location on each island. Players in need. Meanwhile, in the desert, the two Sultan <laughs> militias held a funeral for the late Sultan, where they vowed to get revenge and chant <laughs> death to Theria. There was a lot of spamming of death to Theria. There was a, a lot of it. After which they proceeded to finish building the Sultan's oh, yeah. holy city they did do in that. his honor. Theria, on the other hand, expanded its reach into the arts and became <laughs> the first civilization to develop music. <laughs> oh. I had to rickroll everyone. On the Plains Island, Wouldn't be a complete grew video. And civilizations were thriving. On day nine, we could probably highway, skip this. Oh yeah, the ish, the international state highway. Uh, I think these guys actually, the construction of by the end, they managed to extend this highway uh, across the entire sea into snow. I think they had a. Uh, I think they expanded from planes into snow. The ish, the international state. I don't think they they went all throughout all four islands, but Highway, it was multi-island by the end. Transportation between the major planes nations much <laughs> faster. Overall, the building and architecture and player creativity oh, okay. in planes was simply amazing, and it was all made possible. This build planes was simply. I think this was part of Oasis. It was. Maybe the coolest looking build in the whole thing, and I have no idea what it was. Just a random volcano -y with a purple gem on top, the shard. The shard. It was, it's incredible looking. <laughs> I don't know how they did this. Amazing, <laughs> and it was all made no, possible Joe, no. by the political stability of you said the, the Tavern was Island. The Many in the, <laughs> the desert best building. and jungle and snow <laughs> looked at planes as the shining beacon I don't know. I need a that list. they can aspire to be like one day. A lot of people like this transition. As the end of the day approached, Avery With the and Turkey returned to the place. All I really did there was uh, go in game, uh, do slash time set night. I've actually figured out the perfect place where the sun and the moon would end up in the same position here at the top right, and I just changed the time. That's it. <laughs> As the end of the day approached, people are like, "How did he do that?" It was pretty, it was pretty straightforward. Tavern after spending the day the Blue Cross has a around thing the there. world, visiting civilizations in the jungle, the deserts, and of course the Plains Island. I need those times. During many <laughs> of his visits, some he was very surprised when he found out that most people from these foreign nations these were acting not sessions. The video for this, him, I didn't capture Turkey going into these places. Uh, I didn't get any of that footage. Uh, so yeah, those were all uh, acting him. sessions. This was because Post. rumor had spread about his disobedience to Alanulo, <laughs> and as a result, I don't think he ever visited he had earned either. a worldwide reputation as the savior of refugees, the honorable so. rebel, the man who stood <laughs> up to the emperor, and everywhere a free and Turkey went, he was welcomed with open Turkey arms. Turkey was pretty famous <laughs> around the world. Perfect for that.
Yeah, I heard there was a comedy show here. You should have called me over. When it came to the Aculon Empire, the truth was a freaking turkey had no intention of causing any type of uprising or revolution. In fact, been sitting he in the was same strictly for what, against two hours the idea, <laughs> knowing just how devastating a major war would be. But he did want change in the Empire. During his prolonged stay in Plains, he had seen what freedom and exposition. democracy yeah. look like. He had come to regret his more tyrannical actions in the early days, <laughs> and he now envisioned a reformed Aculon Empire. His new dream was to bring uh, I'll explain everything when it actually snow. gets to the meeting, because there's a lot to talk about here. There's a lot to talk freedom about. Freedom to the people of the Aculon Empire, and make the snow refugees feel safe to come back home. I might just be overly optimistic, but I think we can achieve world peace. <laughs> Truth of okay. If a freaking turkey is able to convince Alanilo to convert the empire from a tyrannical dictatorship into a free democracy, and then the Aculon Empire ends up joining the allies, then world peace wouldn't just be a- By the way, for that entire scene, I had the first, like, 20 seconds of that song on loop. Um, the- <laughs> that I just basically, because I needed that song to go on for a while to have that whole exposition, so I, yeah, I just looped it. Everybody yeah, but he can hear here, this part is not looped because it's proceeds. Yeah, for wishful thinkers, it the would actually proceeds. happen. With this massive goal in mind, a freaking turkey I, I do that with a lot of songs. The Magic Moon, the Aculon theme, there's a lot of repetition Alanilo. of like the first 10, 20 seconds of songs. If I ever need an extension. There he goes. Just this was acting. We talked about. I never captured him leaving we'll planes. Be Before a freaking turkey took off for the snow <laughs> island, turkey also, he had no, met turkey with did the not four major planes <laughs> leaders one last time to tell them what he hopes to achieve in his upcoming talk with Alanulo. The planes leaders were pessimistic. See, when they heard about Alanilo's strict conditions for the meeting to take place, they suspected that this was going to be the meeting where Alanilo removes Turkey from his second in command position, or worse, puts Turkey in Aculon's prison. Whatever happens I don't know today, if they had those suspicions. The leaders promised Turkey maybe they were a little suspicious, but not enough to, like, you know, be like, okay, maybe you shouldn't go. Because Turkey did not expect be to be killed here, not at all. He told me to about it afterward. <laughs> Turkey was, like, holding a carrot walking in. That's how unarmed or aware he was about what was actually about to happen. Snow Island. Uh, he was holding bread. <laughs> I think he's going to the meeting right away. Potion. Okay, so, let's talk about this scene before we play it. I'm assuming most of you have already seen it. Uh, first thing, I guess I'll just start with this. Uh, the Iron Torch in this shot was not here when Turkey was here during the meeting. Uh, this is because uh, the meeting, as is about to displayed, be displayed here in this scene, actually happened on day 8. This whole scene happened on day eight. So what happened basically is I knew in advance that in this meeting, Alanulo was going to kill Turkey. And I also knew that Turkey had a bit of an alliance with Sidefall, Seth, and the rest of the allied nations. So, but, but I think it was actually mostly Sidefall and Seth. Uh, so... Turkey goes, obviously. You know what happens here a little bit. Uh, he's killed. Turkey dies. He's killed by Alanilo. And then, the subsequent response, which we predicted and we were correct about, was Sidefall and Seth would go to war with the Aculon Empire. So here, it was getting a little bit late into the experiments, uh, into the events session. We were on week two, and um, I was kind of looking for a place to end things. So, this war seemed like a very good place to do that. It was a war between three islands, Plains, Sidefall, Seth, Jungle, 
uh, and Aculon Empire. So what happened here? Turkey died on day eight. Alanulo and the rest of them killed him. And then I was like, all right, before anyone declares war, just pause for a second. This is going to be the final conflict. This is going to be how this video ends. So let's make it as epic as possible. Let's make this final battle scene as amazing looking as it can possibly be. So what I did was I gave the players basically a full day. So uh, Turkey is killed by Alanilo on day eight. They basically declare war, but I'm like, all right, pause. I'm going to give both sides some time to prepare how they're going to do this. I'm also going to give all the other nations an opportunity to join the war if they want to. So, you know, so that there's as many people as possible. Uh, and I basically told everyone, all right, guys, this war is happening. If you want to come join, feel free to join in. And uh, that was the final conflict, the final battle of this video. That's how it happened. So on day nine, you know, I just gave everyone that opportunity. Uh, I let everyone, you know, kind of choose their sides and I let every, I let both sides prepare what they were actually going to do. Uh, I gave them, I gave Aculon time to build the Iron Torch. Uh, cause again, it wasn't built by the time that this meeting happens. Uh, and I also gave the, Ac the, uh, allies time to prepare their attack and uh, recruit people. So, yeah, it, it was... Day 9 was a day of peace, a forced day of peace on my end to make sure that this final battle was as epic as it possibly could have been. Uh, then on day 10, the battle happens. That was basically all of day 10. It was like, all right, everyone meet at the Middle Island. And uh, I was the one who told people to meet at the Middle Island. I just felt that would be some cool symbolism and a convenient place to meet. Um... And, uh, yeah, then at the center island, we basically had everyone meet in, uh, a Discord stage, and I said, alright, go ahead, uh, go to the, uh, Snow Island. Uh, but then after that, after the battle began, uh, everyone got in their own calls, and they were all coordinating however the heck they wanted. So, yeah, that is a very short summary of how this final battle actually came into fruition. It was a little bit of fabrication and, and modification on my part. Uh, but again, I think it was worth it. Uh, I think it was, it made the final battle scene a whole lot cooler. Uh, and I'm, uh, there were some negative consequences from doing that. Uh, for example, making this the final conflict kind of screwed over the desert plotline. Um, the desert was in a bit of a conflict with uh, Theria these two sultanate militias uh i think there was going to be some sort of war <laughs> ejk is here <laughs> kind of he can uh give me like a one sentence summary let me know um yeah i think they were actually planning on like <laughs> kidnapping joe feel <laughs> we're our own nation um so yeah D desert was kind of forced to pick a side here when naturally they probably wouldn't have. Um, but again, it was just one of the decisions that I had to make uh, to really make this video have a good ending. Uh, it's just saying the desert is relevant. Yes, yes. <laughs> but obviously the reason that Theria joined uh, the ally side is because, you know, they were allied before, they were friends before. Uh, and I think the reason that... Uh, EJK's people, uh, who was the other one, Imamit, Emirit, uh, the Sultanate militias, I called them in the video. The reason they joined Aculon was because I think they were just friendly with Aculon. And, oh, and they were against Theria. <laughs> and I think, uh, uh, they knew that Zamta would be there. Zamta would be there fighting against Aculon. That was another big reason why they, uh, decided to join Aculon in this fight. All right, thousand players is crazy. Thank you, I appreciate it. Dip it. Uh, okay. Now, speaking of fabrication, we move on to this meeting. I think I'm actually going to show you guys the real footage as to what happened here.
So all of this, uh, not this. This is weird. Turkey's been at the castle. So yeah, here, for like a few this is all real footage. This is what actually happened. Oh, he's right here. Alanio he's <laughs> arriving way. late. Late to his own meeting. XX King. Oh yeah, the leader of the other one. Yes. So here they are. Here we go. This is the meeting. This is all what actually happened. I think everyone's here now. Knights come to the castle. This is all still real. Exactly what happened. <laughs> wow, I think these are he all gathered the everyone. High-ranking officials of Aculon. They're all here. Yeah. Yeah. Still yeah. real. All barren. They did this in the Discord channel that I was in. I was able to capture it. Duke Turkey. And Turkey started Knights the meeting this way. Have now come together to speak with Emperor Lanilo. Lanilo, would you please start hey, wait, the conversation? Wait, wait, wait. Turkey, yeah. hold up. Um, so before we Drew begin, interrupts sorry, him. I, sorry to interrupt. Um, I have a special thing I want to do. Real quick. Wait, wait. Stop right there. Everything after this point switches entirely to an acting server, and all the lines were recorded post. Right there, that moment. That's what it happens. Now I'll show you. I, I'm going to show you guys what actually happened. Let me show you. Hold on. Let me pull this up. I hope I have it. I hope I have it. That wasn't Drew, that wasn't too Drew acting. Uh, Drew, that was Drew actually saying, "Wait, hold up, hold up." That was real. But Alanilo interrupting Drew, that was acting. All right, hold on. Uh, so it's gonna be somewhere over here. I this was on day eight. Yep, here it is. Okay, this scene was a bit of a mess, but here it is. Or something like that, you step up yeah. like, and say like... Uh, where's the beginning of the meeting? All barren. Here it is. Duke this is what Turkey actually happened. And fellow knights. <laughs> See if I can make this bigger, maybe. Come together to speak with Emperor Lanilo. I don't know if I can. About... The Iron Torch. Elanilo, would you please start hey, wait, the conversation? Wait, wait, wait. Turkey, yeah. hold up. Um, so before we begin, sorry, I sorry to interrupt. Um, I have a special thing I want to do real quick. So if, here, uh, it'll only take like a minute maybe. So the, uh, Baron, if I tell you, uh, just like back up to the back of the door of the castle real quick. It's, it's for Elanilo never so interrupted Wilmo, Drew. Uh, you go. Um, Rock Crash, you go. Drew took the uh, opportunity Apple, to back, organize people. Zappy back, Neary back. Uh, Yuki? Did I say that right? Yuki back? Yeah. Uh, awesome. Alan back. I'll skip and... a little bit of this. Oh, uh, Spider, sorry, get back with them. Just... He kept uh, organizing okay, yo, people? Yo. Glum. Oh yeah. my god. Tell him, Why bro, is he on a boat up there? Oh Glum's, Glum's, he, Glum is really They're interrupted by someone on a boat on the ceiling. Okay. Actually, can the rest <laughs> of you guys move to, like, let's maybe go, the rest let's of you? Can, can All right, you, okay, the rest yeah, of you guys move to the sides, please. So you're Yeah, not yeah just move to, like, the sides. Like, just hide, like, back here. Yeah, just hide in, like, the corners. Okay. Okay, now here we go. Really quickly, is Golem done? Okay, that kid is so annoying me. All right, um... You guys, yeah, please don't so, like stand oh. scattered. Like stand. Yeah, the guys, side. if you're back, <laughs> go to the sides, please. MQ and Awesome Allen, you can go to the sides. <laughs> they were having yeah, so Bernie much trouble Allen. organizing people. <laughs> no, 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 Bernie, Bernie, Bernie's fine. Bernie's yeah, fine. Yeah, uh, right, I can yeah, yeah, Bernie yeah. real quick. Okay. okay cool, cool. Here I have froze. Good, Hold on. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. All right. Um. So now watch this. This is how they kill Turkey. There was no big meeting. This is what they did. I'm just making sure it doesn't look. Yeah, it's good. All right. Um. Now. Kill them! Sorry, oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Kill all the sorry, traitors! Ender. I'm sorry. Oh my God! You betrayed us, Ender. Wait, what? Oh. And right there, a freaking turkey. You can see a little bit. It's a little small. A freaking turkey was slain by Alanilo. That is what actually happened. That was so anticlimactic. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That was the real footage of what happened at that meeting. I think they killed Ender, Bernie, and Soggy as well. But those three actually ended up being revived. I'll real quick tell the story about that. I think... Here's my best explanation, to my knowledge. 
what happened is, I think the day before or something, uh, Alonula was tipped off that there were some revolutionary plans stemming from the crew of Turkey, Soggy, and Bernie, and Ender. Uh, I think he misinterpreted those logs because they didn't plan any type of revolution, but maybe there was like a specific message over Discord that he saw. Uh, now, right, Bismarck said it. Uh, now what happened is someone sent a message in a chat message log. Uh, Alanulo is also a mod in the Discord server. And he can see deleted messages in the Discord server. So someone somewhere sent a message about a supposed revolution and then deleted that message, which allowed Alanilo to see it. And therefore it made him, th that was one of the things that made him, I think that was like the key thing that made him decide, okay, we got to kill these people. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was technically metagaming. I don't think he meant to see it. He was just, he just happened to be scrolling, read that message, and then, you know, once you see that, you can't unsee it. <laughs> so that made him very, very suspicious. Now, again, it was technically metagaming to see that message and then to act on it. That, that was like a 50-50 action, like, yeah. Uh, and because he acted on it, we decided to revive three of the people who were killed in that meeting. So, like, we couldn't completely reverse the course of the events because at that point, the damage was done. You know, Turkey was killed by Alanilo. Everyone saw it in chat. That's kind of too big of an event to reverse. Yeah, and it was kind of a last-second decision. So, it was a bit of a mess. Uh, and we had to make some compromises there. But that's ultimately what we decided to do. So we kept Turkey dead for the sake of the plot, but we revived Ender, we revived Soggy, we revived Bernie. Those guys who ended up being the leaders of the revolution, or at least of the snow refugees. So yeah. That, that is about what happened there. So because that happened, I decided to recreate, so instead of showing uh, Alanulo and his uh, goons <laughs> killing people in this manner, as they did in the real events, we decided to recreate how the deaths happened by refilming an argument. Uh, and I also took the opportunity, obviously, to make it a lot more dramatic. <laughs> it was very, very convenient that way. So, yeah. Wait, no, wait. Here. Drew, not yet. I, I want to do something. So what we did, everything after this is a big acting First. session. Uh, I actually had every... I took every single person from that recording. I took exactly what where they were standing, exactly what armor they were wearing, and had them put in the same exact position they were standing so we could continue this scene in a bit of an alternative reality. So, again, this was real. So, before we begin, sorry, I, sorry to interrupt. Um, I have a special thing... This I is all real footage. Real wait, wait, so, wait. Then, right there, everything after this is a recreation. Here. Drew, not yet. I, I want to do something first. Uh, Turkey, can you sit on the throne for a second? Uh, why? Just do it, just do it. Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, what are we doing? What is happening? Before we proceed with this, let me real quick check donations. Because apparently they just stopped working. My apologies for that. I don't know why. Uh, so let me just make sure that, uh, I read everything, even if it doesn't pop up. Uh, let's see. You fooled us with Davrit, says Charm, how dare you? Uh, hold on. Okay, here it is. Uh, Charm, $5, flying away, didn't deserve that. Goes to show how much Ish's words count despite... 
Uh, Emerald Ace, $5. I didn't find 2E2G back on Tria's public server just for it to not be... <laughs> it's freaking the stupidest name ever. Uh, Charm, $5. Wazik was the man we didn't know we needed. Uh, 2 Drew, $5. Davert is a goat for real. Charm, $5. You feel this is Davert. Uh, Char Chair... Ten dollars. Thank you, Chair. Uh, love the video. What's going on next, event-wise? Is it the last civilization, or are we doing more things like the prison? Uh, I think the next few events are going to be more short events, like one-day events. Things like Thousand Player Simon Says, Thousand Players Hide and Seek, Thousand Players Hunger Games, things like that. Um, in order to make another civilization video, I need to find an editor because, as you can see, that video took me, I don't know, at least seven, eight months to edit on my own. And uh, yeah, I need to find an editor before I attempt to do another civilization video like that. Or at least ha not have an editor do the whole thing, just like at least half of it. That would, that would probably be it. That would be enough for me to want to do another civilization video. Uh, baby carrots, $5. You should set up a public SMP based off four islands uh, that wipes every couple of weeks for your friends. Just an idea. I don't know. We'd have to have a lot of moderation for that because it would be very easy for that to turn chaotic, but... Uh, Maybe, maybe. Uh, and three dollars, uh, no. $5 from Charm again. Sadly, I gotta go. My final message donation here. Have a successful stream. Thank you, Charm. Uh, you didn't have to give me this much money today. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm actually gonna leave this tab open, so I'll at least get a noise whenever someone donates. And uh, I'll be able to check because of that. Okay. Are we ready? Uh, you should release unscripted bits of the vid. Maybe, maybe, on this channel. Okay. Can I trust you, Turkey? We'll just watch this scene. This is all acting, voice acting. They did <laughs> yeah. terrific. You like what? this, right? Yeah, Sitting I mean, on the throne? <laughs> you put me on here, I, I don't know what you're talking about. In front of all these people? The... <laughs> a lot. I, what are you getting I'm, on about? I know that you've colluded with the Plains Alliance. Also, the song here? This really isn't a real song. Basically, what I did is I took a song that Chook sent me. I just took the drum beat of that song, combined it with the static noises, just random static noises throughout, like... Uh, let me get to that scene real quick. I'll show you exactly what that looks like uh, a little earlier. Yeah, here it is. So right when... Alanilo begins the con the confrontate the confrontation. Uh, it's a song named "Ghosting." All of it disappears, and it just it's down to the bare minimum, a single drum beat, and it does that until it ends. This scene was inspired, this music was inspired by a scene from Breaking Bad. Uh, it's the episode where Walt goes to the cellar, he finds the money's missing. Actually, I'm not gonna spoil it, never mind, never mind. Those of you watching bad, never mind. I ain't gonna keep talking, but those who know, know. Crawl space. I'll just say crawl space. Uh, yeah, so that's, all, that's another Breaking Bad inspiring scene. <laughs> no spoilers, guys. Don't put any... Because I know some people might be watching it. Okay. You're lucky I just said that. Okay. Uh, anyway, let's finish the video. I have to go in uh, 30 minutes. But I know that you want to take over let's this finish nation. This. Take this throne for yourself. Whoa, 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 what? There's nothing you can do at this point to convince me that you're not plotting a revolution against me. <laughs> Thank you, I Mr. Hero Brand. No, no! Alanilo! Yes, I've talked with planes. I've also talked with Desert and Jungle. I am a diplomat. And I'll tell you this, all those people that I talked with will become our allies the moment we turn this place into an actual democracy. Why are you secretly leading people off my island? <laughs> You can see the beats. I add a little reverb on the heartbeats here to make them even more intense. So instead of bah, bah, they go bah, bah, bo. <laughs> you can kind of hear that here. Because they thought you were going to kill them. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, so did I. So that's the point of this meeting. They also start getting louder and louder. You want to get rid of me? You know what? And also random static. How about that I just I leave <laughs> and you won't have to deal with me again? I'm just gonna go. Okay? Pop, pop, pop. 
Yeah, and then you'll come back with an army. I'm sorry, Turkey. So, that's how we, uh, that's how we decided to show Turkey's death. He was really killed by Alani Lu in the event. For the very same reasons mentioned in the video. Well, basically, almost. Alani Lu was worried about a revolution. But... It just happened in a very anticlimactic way. So... Wow. <laughs> we recreated it in this manner. supporters Slockman I think was actually killed a few days earlier <laughs> but he was a supporter of Turkey so I just put They're him down his supporters as well. <laughs> I just this put him in the spot easy like that there was a purge on the snow island this was real Tudra was chasing Ender Ender a Turkey supporter and I think like 10 seconds later after this clip Tudra like or I think Ender just jumped off a platform and died of fall damage uh but again, we revived Ender for reasons mentioned earlier. And many of Turkey's supporters were killed. The few who were able to escape immediately swam to the other islands to tell everyone exactly what happened. Putting together this scene and all of the night was started quite an experience. Because this song starts from just the softest... Ooh, <laughs> just the softest this much it starts this quiet but then the song just builds gradually slowly builds and keeps building keeps building keeps building until the very end they when it's insane of the most loved members it's of literally the entire when song is just Turkey's build up death message appeared in chat people and, and putting together were outraged and narration after the leaders on top of, the of this song started activating was uh, militaries yeah quite a difficult by. task but fortunately Turkey once visited Los <laughs> I'm giving the army fortunately I was able to pull to it off sure ready for battle Meanwhile, Alanulo just gets more intense, more intense, more intense. Armies, so he declared a full lockdown, reached out to his own allies, and called them to the Aculon Castle to this be is ready all true. in case the allies declare war. And sure enough, when the Blaze leaders talked with Theria and Seth, the vote was unanimous. On day 10, the Alliance of Democratic Nations officially declared war on Here the I made the drum a little louder. Empire. I just want to say I wish you luck and great success. Hopefully we all see some of you tomorrow to sign the constitution of the new Aculon. This is all real. Republic, this is real footage for real speech. That we all dream about having. People Thank are hyping you. each other Thank up. You all. <laughs> this isn't about us. This isn't about our life. It's about getting this, justice. This was not real. This speech. <laughs> all the allied nations. Uh, what I did was I uh, wrote a line that I wanted to be read, and I held a competition. I just had a bunch of people submit uh, lines, and uh, I think this was Madsby who read it, who had the best line, in my opinion. Um, met up at so the that center was it. Island, oh, yes. So they and here's the Midnight Star of the Viking. Together. Today, we fight for revenge. We, we fight for freedom. freedom. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a crazy line, Midnight. Uh, yeah. It was, uh... I don't know, I don't know how you do it. That was the less intense version. <laughs> was it? I don't even remember. <laughs> Midnight's, honestly, I... I don't know how, how you're able to do that. But, uh, yeah. Insanely good line. And it was about here when the server crashed and we struggled to take it on, take it, let it back online for like the next 30 minutes. Because everyone coming together in one place just absolutely broke it. So right before the battle began, <laughs> the servers went down. <laughs> God. <laughs> but, uh.
The Jaro ended up know, restarting them. had set a trap. <laughs> the Aculon builders had taken inspiration from history and created the what they called the Iron Torch, the most advanced defensive tower in the world. How did players tell each other apart in the final height, battle? Sturdy walls, uh, they seriously couldn't. And lava cover. It was actually very difficult for them. <laughs> this, is, this is crazy. There's nothing we could, we could really do about that. We also enabled some, like, guidelines in regard to this war, like, uh, in regard to spies, like, when spies were allowed to sabotage, like, I think we only let them sabotage, like, 30 minutes into war, just so it wouldn't end immediately. But here's the song again. You can see the flickering of white. Time. Can never... Uh, shout out to Evan, Evan MC Gaming, for helping me learn shaders for this specific scene. Uh, check out his channel. He has I, probably the best cinematics out of any Minecraft YouTuber. The films he produces. Uh, he was kind enough, literally for like two hours, just to get in a Discord call with me and just explain how he does shaders. So, yeah, big shout out to Evan for helping me with this scene and all future scenes. Be your trusted also, uh, let me... Frick, I have to go in like 30 minutes. Okay, hold on. A little less than 30 minutes. I, I really wanted to show people this. Uh, for this scene, I used something called White World. Um... Here it is. Okay. So for each of these shots that I recorded in replay mod, like this one for example, there was another scene, another render with the same exact shot, but with the white world version. So you could see at the top left <laughs> what white world does in I think this was I think this was still Silder's shaders. Uh, white World turns every single block white. And so what I did is I added a little bit of that on top of every single one of these shots. So like, hold on. This one, for example, I just added on top. See? White World. But only at like, that's 100% capacity. This is, I think I set it to like, yeah, 50% capacity, and then I had it fade out. Oh, it's a little laggy, but yeah. So it's like a flash of white, like a very subtle flash of white. Um, you see here again, this is like 50% capacity, boom, 100%. So, yes. It took a little bit to do this, but... I really like how it turned out. So you can see flash of white. That was a, something called the white world. Yeah, exactly. Like your eyes adjusting to the light. Exactly. No, it's the harshest mistress of all. I just really like shiny white. How it made it look in the snow biome, especially. The moment it starts snowing, uh, I switch from Silders to BSL shaders. And it was actually a pack that Evan sent me. Like, I didn't have to change much. It was a pack that he sent me that he used, I believe, for snow. And spent a thousand hellos and goodbyes. Because, <laughs> here's the thing. Uh, first-person perspective, you'll see the very few first-person perspective shots from my end that I included. They look horrible with snow on. You'll, you'll see in a second. That's why I did this basically all in a replay mod. I think that was acted, the TNT and then the breaking in. But everything else in this war is uh, real. Oh, no, this was acting as well. Yeah. And Zomta's death was acting. <laughs> a nice replay mod shot there. <laughs> People like that one. <laughs>
think originally Aculon meant to fill this entire place with lava. Instead of leaving a big gap, they wanted to lava the whole thing except for the ladder. Uh, it would have made it a lot more difficult to climb up, but I think they just ran out of time. Yeah, these, they drop in the stalagmite, whatever they're called, spikes. So Zamta didn't die this way, he did die during the actual battle. Uh, so sorry, he died right after the battle ended, when it was sunny. So I wanted to still include Zamta dying, so I just decided to recreate that. Um, it would be weird if it was like... It's sudden, the shot suddenly cut to like a sunny snow afternoon uh, randomly. So yeah, we just recreated that. Uh, Zomta was actually killed by a player named Yavs. I made sure to keep that one accurate. But yeah, he wasn't shot off a tower. I think he was just ganged up on by <laughs> Sultanate Militias. <laughs> they got absolutely wrecked, both Davert and Zomta. But they put up a good fight. Shook. Building his trees. Epic shots. Epic. <laughs> I want to show you guys one of my first person perspective shots. This is first-person perspective. Uh, it's inside, so you don't really see, but it was a lot darker and a lot uglier looking. First, silvers. Here's people building towers outside. And here's a lot of death. <laughs> there he goes. A little anticlimactic, but it worked with the music. Rest in peace. Wait, Alangelo died? He fell. What? He fell. Alangelo died. <laughs> I think those are all real. Those are just people's reactions. Two Drew check donos. Oh god. Oh, God. Two Drew tipped $5. You gotta explain to the people what really happened to Drip Chat. <laughs> Fine. This was one of the things that I changed for my video. Uh, Two Drew killed Drip Chicken during the war. Two Drew jumped him. Drip Chicken was uh, outside the castle. In a little Los Pollos Hermanos stand, I believe, selling chicken, and Tudru killed him. But I just, I just, I'm sorry. Drip Chicken has plot armor that surpasses the sword of Tudru. I, I wasn't gonna let that one slide. No, no way, no way. Yeah, you got. Please flame uh, Tudru in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Soon after Alanulo died, the Aculon Empire officially <laughs> surrendered. I actually didn't know that until, like, I already wrote. Or actually, I don't know when I found out that Drip Chicken was actually dead for post-war. But, uh, I think I already decided Drip Chicken lives, and then I went and checked, and I'm like, oh, he died? Really? Ah, he lives. <laughs> that was basically Wait, I can't, I can't what happened there. Kill, kill them. Otherwise, it would have been too sad. Too the sad. Allies didn't stop fighting. No mercy, no mercy. They're all saying no mercy. Like that, there was a purge yeah. on the Snow Island. There was but a purge time, indeed. It was the supporters of Turkey Drift doing and the, start. the killing. <laughs> World of War. Absolute slaughter fest. There we go. Now we're all good. After a while, a lot of people died after it. Yep, very true. Taken over the Iron Torch, very true. And all the Aculon forces had either been killed right, I got like 15 or minutes had left, fled so. the island before I gotta go. Into hiding. 
And with that, the Alliance <laughs> of Democratic Nations These shots were all real. defeated the Aculon Empire. They did it. It was only Where's when the, the shot of Davert was in the battle? I think the clouds parted. I think my uh, Davert error happened. To uh, reflect on what they had done. Yeah, I'm not gonna scroll back here just because I don't have enough time. But I but think you see Davert right when they're charging no the castle uh, during the when slow motion shots. I think they continued to be ruthless and thirsty for blood. That was kind of a cool shot right there. It was there. as if they had become <laughs> their enemy. <laughs> As the allies each safely returned to their homes, now with a clear mind, many of them felt regret. Neither side was completely I don't think innocent, Seth felt regret. And the war was complicated. <laughs> ja but told me this. It was over. <laughs> Whenever I'd show Ja that scene, he was and like, oh, Seth definitely didn't feel regret. <laughs> and the music swells. Oof. Keep building, keep building. This uh, post-war music was also just big build, Feria, mega build. And a few smaller nations created a world alliance with a massive parliament building on the center Seth. island where world leaders Fine, met I'll mention it to when it comes up. Of their nations, and most importantly, oh. to keep. Uh, most of post post-war was just completely made up because after the war ended, everyone just kind of gave up on role playing. Um, there was uh, a, I believe there was like a world government slash alliance set up that was very limited in power. Uh, I think they had jurisdiction over the all, over all four islands where basically this world nation could have court trials. And there was a trial, uh, and I actually show a video of that briefly in this post-war montage they actually did have a trial they tried to drew uh i think they did actually find him not guilty uh i don't know if it was exactly a pardon as mentioned in the video but they did find him not guilty um and uh that was that so i represented to drew being pardoned in this manner as i did in this video uh there was no government building that was actually something that i had a lanula built <laughs> As, so we could use it for acting shots. So, you know, weirdly enough, Alani, uh, Alanilo led the uh, build project of the government building. Um, so, and the these in this shot were like kind of all the world leaders the peace that uh, survived. And the first order of business. Oh, I think Ghost Toast died in the war. I never actually showed it, but one of the four major planes leaders also died in the war. Was pardoning the few living players who fought for Aculon so they didn't have to live in hiding. Yes. Meanwhile, the snow refugees were able to move back to the snow island and create the new Aculon Republic. Putting I'm not sure if there was an official republic, as I put it. Uh... If there were, if there were to be one, Andrew would probably be the leader. But it would more so be like a group thing, I think, most likely. Democracy in snow. It wasn't too organized. It wasn't as organized as I showed in this video. Tore down the remains. Of I don't think they ever tore it down. Actually, it was freaking huge. Um, this graveyard was made by our builders. Uh, iron torch and I thought it'd be a cool symbolic a moment. Honoring all who emotional moment, sentiments to Aculon. end the video. And overlooking oh, this the shot. graveyard was the... <laughs> These two shots, uh, I back to back. In the battle. Rest in peace, Shrimpateed. This really, uh, got to some people. And... Aculon. Poor iPixel and President Steve. The wedded couple. Ugh. And overlooking the graveyard was the man, or turkey, Statue of who turkey. inspired the This is also made by uh, builders, yeah. Most of the post-war was just like... My way of making this a semi-happy ending. And so, the jungle went back to hosting <laughs> comedy shows, the desert went back to pursuing the arts, and Drift Chicken went back to running Los Pollos Hermanos. Totally. After all that happened throughout the days, things were, we're finally, finally settling down. down. This shot was from a place named 
7-Eleven, which I think was created by Solev. <laughs> Solev made a 7-Eleven uh, uh, gas station of some sort. I, th not, I don't even think there was a gas station. It was just a 7-Eleven convenience store. Uh, but underground was a uh, mega farm of a sort. That I attributed to Drip Chicken. So. That was that. <laughs> For many players, the newfound peace. You can see Floppa there wearing netherite. For many players. Right there, Floppa <laughs> and Ishfin. Wow, he got a full netherite. I didn't even know that. This was real. Um, they actually did get, end up getting full netherite. Here's the new found from the center piece island allowed for new stories to begin here of course players, i did the a new found piece allowed for new a few cheeky shots boy jedi the prisoner who killed john leashed stories wood daddy and thanos chicken a call back to my second video and their cats from the island video to begin jaw warden jaw and warden solev along with magic gum in the back in the background. <laughs> Some people noticed magic of staring at them. The thunder of the prison. And Legacy. With his parrots. Standing in the same exact position. As he did in the final shot of the first Civilization video. And in the background. The statue. Of a freaking turkey. But for us... Here's where the trial of Tudru took place. It was in a Bastion of Peace location. It was kinda cool. But, uh, there wasn't enough room to show it. To end. And just a bunch of shots of all the different places. And that's it. Shout out to everyone on this list. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> there was a glowing. Uh, yeah, that's the video. Uh, hopefully I gave you guys a uh, enough insight into what uh went into making this. What happened after? We just shut down the server. <laughs> that was it. Pokey Monkey! I found a bell on the center island and someone offered to buy it for 64 diamonds. <laughs> because it was the only bell on the server. Wow! Impressive! Sorry, yeah, I don't think you can see the message, but... Dang. Very good. There was a Hunger Games, was there? God, I don't even remember. I don't... Maybe... I think we wanted to at first, but... Yeah. Uh, again, if you just clicked into the stream, feel free to, uh, go back and, uh, in the beginning I answered a few questions about server sharding and just more general information. Uh, any final questions here at the very end before I, uh, have to go? Ish, almost at one mil views. Oh, really? Did the video almost, is the video one mil views? Let's see. Let's see. Alright, yeah, right now it is at 876,000 views. Uh, here's the thing about the video performance. Uh, it actually... Uh, it uh, In the first two days of upload, it grew much faster than the first two Civilization videos. Uh, Clover! Did he portray me as Alanulus hench... <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I did. <laughs> I did, Clover. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, this video actually, in the first two days, grew a little bit slower than Prison, uh, the Prison video. The Prison video actually grew faster in the first few days, in the first two days, than this video has. But the weird thing is that in the second day of release, this video is actually picking up on the Prison video. 
So in the race of which video had the most views in the first few days, um, this thousand player civilization video season two, uh, was behind by like 200,000 views this morning. Uh, but now it's only by, it's only behind by 30,000. So this video is actually right now growing a lot faster than the prison video did. It's still a little bit behind, but the rate at which it's growing, it might actually surpass it. I can show you guys this maybe if you can see. The top 10 videos upon release in the first two hours and... Or two days and something. So you can see prison is still number one in terms of initial growth, but this video is actually catching up, and I think it might actually surpass the prison video in terms of growth. We'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah, no confetti yet, because it's not first, but maybe it will be. Um, you'll love to see the analytics. Oh, yeah, actually. Get Ryan, let me... For those YouTube nerds, uh, I just want to make sure I don't accidentally show anything that I shouldn't, but uh, for those of you who are curious... Okay. Let me go to the video stats alone. Hold on. I don't know if this means much, but this is uh, just the view chart of views increasing uh, in the first two days. Let's see. Ah, dang it. The app is frozen now. Shoot, I gotta go in five minutes. Uh, hold on. Uh, I want to show you guys the graphs. Hold on. It's just for the YouTube nerds. Ah! It just crashed. Okay, hold on. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Boom. This content. Uh, oh, will you release the map? Holy thumbs. Uh, yeah, if I get enough requests. I might just release the map, uh, just day one, maybe. I don't see enough negatives to withhold it, so... I don't know. I'll talk with staff and see. And if we do release it, it'll, it'll be in a hashtag random. Okay. Uh, go to video analytics. All right. This is what the retention graph looks like on this video. So you see the expected drop off at, in the first few, uh, seconds but then people uh tended to stay and watch basically the entire thing all one hour and uh 13 minutes i sent this chart to uh both magic magicum and silver um silver said quote those stats are absolutely nuts <laughs> so i think this is good i don't know i've never uploaded a video this long um Let's see, where's magic? What did he say? He said that AVD is insane for one hour, 14 minutes. Uh, AVD, that graph, uh, basically, the higher it is, the, more, the longer people watch, the more YouTube recommends the video to others. So that's why you want people to watch the entire video. So uh, I think we'll end there because I got to head out. <laughs> you, I don't think people... Guess what I'm doing? I have a, uh... <laughs> I'm meeting up with a few friends to watch... finally watch the Mario movie. <laughs> so hopefully it's good. Alright. I've heading out. Uh, any quick questions that I can uh, answer? Oh, I actually haven't played the violin in a while, Aztecs, but thank you for asking. I really want to get back into it soon. Um, okay. All right. You know what? This is probably too many questions. Um, if you want to ask more questions, well, we're going to have a community meeting next Saturday. Or just ask me in chat when I'm talking. Um, yes. Okay, hold on. I have an idea here.
I present to you the story of Los Pollos Hermanos. <laughs> All right. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope I was able to explain a little bit about this video. Definitely not everything. But this stream was long enough. <laughs> Alright. Solid. Anything else? <laughs> Shut up, Legacy. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Alright. Let's get my stream outro. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Cell. Thank you, Rince Legacy. Misfit Josh. Pizza Gaming. Wabafet. Holy Thumbs. Redmaster. Blue Robin. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you.